To reach the forbidden lands of Tang Chi, they need to take the northeast road from the Blue Star Palace. It's about 3,000 kilometers, which they have to cover in a month, Xin Yun asked. Is it that far away? He also asked why Qin Zheng Feng had imprisoned Yue Lan so far away. The girl replied that he planned to use the soul forging scroll on her. Her sister won't marry him, so he locks her in the Tian Qi locked lands. He uses a soul forging scroll on her to greatly change her thoughts and force her to marry him. Qin Yun replied that he would regret it. He asked how Xiao Yue Mei had angered Prince Tian Qi. Is the Tian Xiao Empire unfriendly with the Tian Qi Empire? Xiao Yue Mei replied, so he wouldn't mention this man in front of her. She killed the ambassador who was in charge of delivering Qi Yu's marriage contract. So he sent another master to capture her. She had to travel to the forbidden lands of Tian Qi to find herself a soul forging scroll to increase her strength. She asked how he dared to ask her to marry him. What's worse, her brother Xiao Yan Long, who has a different mother, sent her to Qi Yu for 10 Tian Qi locks. When she completes her training with the soul forging scroll, she will destroy them. She started laughing evilly, and the guy called her a scary woman. Lan Xiao had warned him that a murderous aura was approaching. He said that this aura was very strong. Its master has almost reached the realm of the war path. The guy needs to hide. Lan Xiao is still recovering, so he won't be able to help. Qin Yun replied that it seems like they won't have time to hide anymore. It's already here. An unknown woman with blue hair arrived. Xiao Yue Mei asked if she was one of Qi Yu's dogs. The woman replied that Lord Qi Yu misses her. This sentence of hers confirmed the girl's words. Xiao Yue Mei asked if she wanted to take her to him. She would see how this woman would do. Qin Yun said to take his time, after all, this woman had almost reached the Martial Way realm. Xiao Yue Mei asked how he knew. The woman praised him. She will kill him quickly, for Lord Qi Yu doesn't want to see other men around Lady Yue Mei. The girl asked. What did it matter that she was almost in the realm of the warpath? She wouldn't dare get her killed. They would just exhaust her. The woman certainly didn't like that self-assurance. The girl was surrounded by a water dome. It was a water dungeon technique. The unfamiliar woman replied that there was air inside, therefore she need not worry. Qin Yun flew towards her, for this was not good. The woman let the water spray at him and said this guy was annoying. It was the attack that hit him. It was night. The girl couldn't sleep as she waited for the next day to come. She missed her brother Qin Yun very much, but she didn't expect him to show up again. It's all like a dream. He's changed a lot as he's grown up. There are many princesses in the Tian Qi Empire, and her position is the lowest among them. This is because, unlike the others, she used to be a servant. The girl's thoughts drifted to memories. One day, the emperor invited the princes and princesses to be guests in the Tian Qi Empire. The prince asked how dare this insignificant girl go with the pure-blooded nobility. The girl apologized for that. They could just ask Qi Mei Lian to walk further away from them. Xin Yun said not to get discouraged, after all, he would play with her these couple of days. The prince asked, he heard it right. The pure blood prince wants to play with the servant. Qin Yun told him to shut up. He held out his hand to her. The girl turned away, for she shouldn't play with him. No one would want to be with a princess like that. But he took her hand anyway. He wanted to show her the toys the master had given him. She had something to say and called him prince. But Qin Yun said to just call him brother. They came to the gazebo, after which he pulled out a drawer. There were some soldiers lying there. But Qi Mei Lian is not interested in such toys at all. Qin Yun started bragging about his treasures. Even though it is said that princes are hardworking, but they are also human beings. Qi Mei Lian asked why he thought girls didn't like that kind of thing. He replied that he thought she didn't know how to laugh. All in all, she's just a sweet princess. Those words confused her a little. After that, she never met Qin Yun's brother again. She needs to get stronger and get back to him. She even saved her two ponytail rubber bands for this. She knew that Qin Yun's brother drank from this cup and touched it with his lips. But there was one but he didn't even memorize her. So she's going to play his game. Meanwhile, Qin Yun sneezed. Lan Xiao said that his injuries were probably more serious than they seemed. He needs to cultivate and recover. He asked not to disturb him unnecessarily. Qin Yun asked if the current situation was suitable for cultivation. He replied that it was fine. The woman said this guy talks too much and attacked him again. The attacks were headed straight for him. But suddenly, an old man stood in front of him and told him to be careful. He stopped her attack with one hand. Xiao Yue Mei asked, wasn't he from the martial arts academy? The woman realized this was bad. This old man had stopped her technique with one hand. He must be stronger than Grand Elder Kun Xing. She didn't expect this guy to have such strong allies. She had better go back. She said that Qin Yun was just lucky this time. Her technique that had been holding the girl down dissipated, but she lay there in front of the woman. 
Qin Yun wanted to immediately run up to her, but the old man stopped him. Qin Yun replied that he hadn't thanked him yet. He asked who it was. His name is Qin Yun He, and he was Qin Yun's great-grandfather. Qin Yun said that this was not the time for jokes. His great-grandfather's name was Qin Xing Cheng, and he was one of the emperors who died in the Tianqi Empire. He was 37 years old at the time. The old man showed him something and asked him what it was. He replied that it was the height of a very strong monster. It had been processed in a very complicated way, and its strength was very high. He also said that this piece has rough edges. It could have been cut from a large hide that was formed from several fragments. There are spiritual marks on the corners. The price of monster skins is very high. He wouldn't be able to draw spiritual marks on them with his knife. Xin Yan He replied that his spiritual sign technique is not bad. He is really capable. He won't hide it anymore, it's a piece of the map. Qin Yun said that it is an expensive material, but it is completely pure. There are probably special techniques to hide the map. The old man replied that the map was drawn with dark signs. He couldn't break their defenses yet. He had this map for many years. Qin Yun's father had given it away. Qin Yun was surprised that he was really his great-grandfather. He replied that he had explored the Cloud Dragon Mountains when he was young. He almost died there. So he found himself trapped there for decades. But a master from the Martial Arts Academy saved him and offered to be his successor. Back then, he was already in the realm of the Martial Path. He wasn't interested in the relationship between empires, so he didn't return to the palace. Qin Yun wondered why he didn't say anything right away. He didn't know that his school had such a strong ally. The old man said that when his father studied at the Martial Arts Academy, he recognized him, but he promised not to tell anyone. After that, he lost his way and was seriously injured. Qin Yun now realized why his father was never around him. He asked where he was now and if he was better. The old man replied that he was still recovering. He is not sure if his father will be able to heal completely. The old man is glad that the boy was able to realize this. The serious wounds also affected his heart, worsening his condition. Qin Yun asked if great-grandfather was giving this card to him. The old man replied that it was originally meant for him. His mother met his father thanks to this card. She also died because of it. This is a map of a deity's tomb. It shows the place where a meteorite once fell. The map was divided into four parts. His mother and three other women were washing clothes in the river, each receiving a fragment of the map. The meteorite, after falling, caught the attention of the three empires. They sent men to that village. Then his mother met his father and fell in love, and his father was a prince at the time. Ignoring the judgment of those around him, he married his mother. The other two women who found the map fragments also left with the princes of the Tianqi Empire and the Tianxiao Empire, who were now emperors. The woman who went to the Tianxiao Empire had a good life, but like his mother, she died a couple years after giving birth. On the other hand, the woman who went to the Tianqi Empire had a hard life. She became a servant and died after giving birth. Qin Yun asked for the last woman. That woman was his mentor. Qin Yun couldn't believe it. He asked his mentor had died from the curse. The old man replied that his mentor was special, so the curse only weakened her. But people accused her of using forbidden techniques. The guy knew it. The old man said she'd be fine. She's already gotten rid of the curse and is hiding somewhere now. The kid shouldn't worry. Qin Yun asked if he would need to find the rest of the map. The old man replied in agreement. The woman who went to the Tianxiao Empire was the mother of Xiao Yue Lan and Yue Mei. The woman who went to the Tianqi Empire became a servant, but was still in a relationship with the emperors, became Qi Mei Lian's mother. Her part of the map was given to the old man in secret many years ago. Qin Yun couldn't believe that Qi Mei Lian was her daughter. The old man replied that he wished he could remember her. She missed him very much. He's proud to have a great grandson like him. The old man will leave the rest to the boy. He will continue to study the Cloud Dragon Mountains. Qin Yun asked if he was leaving. Among other things, since the old man had been the master of the academy for a long time, he must be rich. He replied that he had something for the boy. 50 purple coins. It's only 5,000 coins, but it's better than nothing. The old man said that when this world first appeared, there were nine suns in the sky. They gave spiritual energy and sustained life. So the great land of nine suns was created. Whoever understands the secret of the nine suns will receive their power. With the power that the old man has now, it remains only a dream. Right now, they are at the edge of the great land of the nine suns. There is very little spiritual energy here. 
They have to pass through the dangerous Cloud Dragon Mountains and go into the Marchil Wastelands where there are strong Marchil paths. Shin Un told Great Grandfather to be careful. The old man replied that he was not that weak. This Mei Lian is not bad. The guy wants to help Xiao Yue Lan, but goes with Xiao Yue Mei. The old man tells him to be careful of those who call him a rogue. Guy wonders what he can even do about it. Xiao Yue Mei and Qin Yun were on a break. Qin Yun started to wake up the girl after all, she had been sleeping for a whole day. Xiao Yue Mei thought that it was her aunt who had prepared dinner. The guy asked what other aunt he was. He's Qin Yun. The girl already wanted to hit him, but he effortlessly blocked her fist. He told her not to fidget or he'd spill the soup. Xiao Yue Mei thought that his serious demeanor was even frightening. His soup was absolutely delicious. The girl said she didn't know the guy could cook. Qin Yun replied that he never would have thought that the first girl he would cook something for would be her. Xiao Yue Mei said that he wasn't as bad as she thought. Xin Yun asked she said something. She said that in the northwest of the empire, there are forbidden lands of Tianqi, but she doesn't know if there are demonic beasts here. Qin Yun asked if she had said so much. The girl replied that her aunt was very jealous. When she was younger, she didn't get married because of immense pressure. If she saw the girl eating and traveling with a guy, she would get very angry. Qin Yun asked, her aunt's name is Xiao Xuan Qin after all. Considering that she had been single for a very long time, her character really should not be a gift. Xiao Yue Mei replied, telling him not to say it in front of her, or else she would just beat him up. A little while later they were on their way. The girl said there was a man there called the Soul Forging Berserker. He was bad years ago. He was also a practitioner of demonic techniques, and was a master of moving souls. He could also siphon off other people's battle spirits to become stronger. According to the Treaty of the Three Empires, the Soul Forging Berserker was sentenced to death. But the Tian Qi Empire decided to let him live. Apparently, they are trying to learn the soul forging technique from him. Master Yang had once told him that there was a potion that created illusions. If Qi Yu got such a potion, he would be able to make the soul forging berserker tell him everything about the soul forging technique. Xiao Yue Mei was worried about her sister. He suggested finding the right place first. The guy explored the area and didn't find any structures. There are only forests, so he thinks he should look underground. Qin Yu noticed something. They've been discovered. Now they have to run. They hid, but there was a stone house. It was unexpected since one of the attackers was her aunt and Qi Yu. Xiao Xuan Qin asked what Yue Mei was doing here and who this guy was. Qi Yu said to quickly grab Qin Yun. Xiao Yue Mei asked who he thought he was. Xiao Xuan Qin said that her sister was safe. She asked why she was with this guy. The woman also noticed that there was a golden bone aura inside her. She asked if the girl was already at the seventh level of body tempering. Xiao Yumi replied that everything was correct. The guy was helping her during the journey, and she asked her not to be angry with him. Xiao Xuan Qin replied that he would not be touched, but that didn't mean that it applied to the girl as well. Her attacks were closing in on them. The guy realized it was bad. He jumped out and used talismans. He fought off her attacks. Qi Yu shouted that he would die right on the spot. Xiao Yan Long hates him. If Qi Yu kills the guy, he will be very happy. Xiao Yumi told him, if he attacked Qin Yun, the girl would not be left out. Qi Yu recognized that she was already at the seventh level of body hardening at such a young age. And the potential is just as frightening as Xiao Yue Lan's. Perhaps by the time she is 20 years old, she will already be in the martial path realm. There aren't many people in the Qianqi Empire who can stand up to her. If she decides to take revenge, the country will be destroyed. The girl said that she didn't expect her aunt to be together with Qi Yu. She is disappointed in her and doesn't want to see her again. Xiao Xuanqin asked, how dare she feel anything for this guy? This attack pushed the guy back inside the stone house. Qi Yu replied that he was already locked up by the forbidden lands of Tianqi. No one but the emperor would be able to free him. If the girl wants to rescue him, she needs to look for his father. The girl screamed at her aunt to leave her alone. She doesn't want to see her anymore. She can't beat them. It's best to back off now. Xiao Xuanqin shouted for her to wait. The girl told her to shut up. Chi Yu need to make sure this guy is dead, but can't do it in front of this girl. If auntie can't kill her, then she shouldn't give a reason for revenge. Xiao Shen Xin replied that she knew that she had locked him up, and now she was furious. She had always been so calm, but now something was wrong. She needs to bring her back to the Tian Xiao Empire and get someone to look out for her. Qi Yu knew that Xiao Yue Mei hated him now, all because of Qi Yun. He just wanted to use it to learn about the soul forging technique. But now that Qin Yun is forbidden in the Forbidden Lands, the soul-forging berserker will no longer be calm. Someone said it wasn't that bad. 
Chin Yun wouldn't come back again. He had become a threat to them ever since the Inscription Temple had taken him in. If they had to depend on the Inscription Temple, he could cause a lot of trouble in the future. The soul-forging berserker has been trapped inside for 200 years. They had imprisoned him alone. He would soon surrender and give them everything about the soul-forging technique. But he won't surrender to the company so easily. Master Yang finally showed up. He thought that if Yang Shiyue wasn't so strong, he would have already married and gotten her. The master asked what was the matter. He replied that Yue Mei was missing. He knows that they were on good terms. She also cut all ties with her aunt. Unlike her past actions, this is already serious. And Qin Yun was locked in the forbidden lands of Tianqi. Yang Shiyue replied that Qin Yun had already fallen in the public eye. She asked why he was still pursuing him. He thinks, how dare Qin Yun make everyone twirl around him. It's a good thing he's already locked up. Otherwise, he would have dealt with him himself. Meanwhile, Qin Yun woke up in an unfamiliar place. The last thing he remembers is being pushed into a dark hallway in a stone house. Qin Yun realized that he was in the Forbidden Lands of Tianqi. His grandmother came to him and told him he was in Forbidden Lands. He couldn't believe it was a legendary soul-forging berserker. It's just a grandmother. Qin Yun asked grandma why she's here. She replied that she was infamous for forging berserk souls. She had helped countless people gain a powerful martial spirit, but they were ungrateful. After her husband died, they forced her to tell everything about the soul-forging technique. She didn't agree, so they locked her up here. The guy introduced himself. He was a former prince of the Tianqi Empire, but he was betrayed and lost his title. They also took away his four spirit vessels. But despite that, they still pursued him and wouldn't give up as long as he lived. As fate would have it, he got into a fight and was banished here. But then he remembered that he had been beaten by a fighter of level 9 body hardening. He didn't understand why he was fine. Grandma replied that she was the one who cured him. His fighting spirits are very interesting but problematic at the same time. Perhaps the fact that he's imprisoned here isn't so bad. That man is really terrible, for he is taking someone else's spiritual vessel. My grandmother asked how old he was then. Qin Yun replied that he was 10. But it's all in the past now. He was not bad now, for he was at the sixth level of body tempering. His grandmother said he should memorize every person who took away his spiritual vessel, and also to destroy them, one by one. Qin Yun said that he had heard that she had extracted the martial spirits of others. The guy asked if it was true. Grandmother replied that the martial spirits and beast spirits she used had no owner. She didn't take martial spirits from other people, only if they were bad. She was one of the four chief concubines of the emperor of the Tianqi Empire. But the emperor had withdrawn, and the queen was afraid that she would seize power. She killed both of her sons and ordered her to give up the soul-forging technique. If her sons weren't dead, she would have done it. There was something similar in the history of the empire. One of Chao Rui Wen's four concubines, because her son was secretly trying to become stronger, was executed along with the other three. But no one knew that the soul-forging berserker and this concubine were the same person. Grandmother said that she used the soul-forging technique to survive. A martial spirit can live for many years, but his martial spirits are special. A guy should already know that. He said that right now his fighting spirits were centered in his hands, but nothing would work if his hands were cut off. He asked if she could help him move his iris. Grandmother replied that she planned to move them into his heart. For now, the unawakened martial fire spirit would remain in his left hand. Qin Yun asked what this meant. She replied that he needed to leave room for the third martial spirit to become stronger. This is the best place to absorb the third spirit. The guy would realize it in the future. Qin Yun asked if his battle spirit shockwave was moved to his heart, which was a vital organ, would he be able to protect it and mitigate the damage? His grandmother told him to lie down. The guy would need to act in concert with her during the procedure. So he would need to move the spiritual forces on his own. She began the procedure. All this time, the shockwave essence was inside the fire essence. She's going to extract it. It's going to hurt a bit, but he needs to endure it by any means necessary. You can't let the shockwave essence go back in. She suddenly, as she told her, felt pain. She told him to be patient, for grandma was almost done. He asked grandmother Xiao, since his fire essence still hadn't awakened, would it awaken if he absorbed a strong martial spirit? She replied, yes. But the fighting spirit had to be very strong. Otherwise, it would destroy both the fire essence and the fire fighting spirit. It was a good thing he had met her. He wouldn't have found the right spirit on his own. He felt the pain again. Grandmother said that if he didn't learn the dark yellow heart scroll, 
she wouldn't be able to move him like that. Only this technique could resist the essence of the shockwave. Even an ordinary metal heart scroll wouldn't be able to withstand it. It would only tear apart. Qin Yun said that the heart is the center of energy movement in the body. It could quickly move energy and shockwave through the body and strengthen the defense. He thanked his grandmother. He asked her what was keeping her from getting free. She replied that there is a very strong magical rock here. It creates a dome that covers the entire area. You can go in, but you can't come out. And the guy tried pouring some of his essence in here. He tried spreading his essence energy, but it didn't work. This place is stronger than the Tower of Suffering. Grandma replied that she has been here for 200 years and knows the place well. There are 109 rooms down here. There is another room in the shape of an octagon. There are also 36 square rooms, and they are bigger than the 72 round rooms. He asked if she could absorb the spiritual energy here without any problem. It is very pure and powerful here. The Forbidden Lands need a lot of energy to support the dome. So there must be a large circle of concentrated spiritual energy. But they get the energy from above. He thinks they absorb the energy through the trees growing above. Grandmother remarked that she seemed to know a lot about these magic circles. He replied that he was a novice master of inscriptions. He imagined girls who thought he was cool. Because lettering masters are cool. Qin Yun said that there was still a big drawback. When spiritual energy is focused in circles, it also penetrates the dungeon. As he expected, this is where the spiritual energy is lowest, the weakest point of the dome. Grandmother asked what use the round and square rooms were. These rooms were built from giant soul stones, spiritual marks already carved on them. Since the 32 rooms are large, the spiritual marks on them absorb spiritual energy, while the 72 round rooms distribute it throughout the dungeon. Grandma said she attacked every room, but it was pointless. The stones are not only strong, they also absorb her energy. Then it's time to use the titanium hammer. She used the hammer to hit the wall. It was all meaningless. All that was left was a scratch. Grandma said the same thing happened to her. It didn't matter how much energy he expended, it would all be absorbed. She suggested putting it off. He's a master of spirit marks, which means learning soul forging techniques would be a good solution for him. She has no sons. He's a good kid and he's a master of spiritual signs. Teaching him will be a pleasure for her. The guy thanked her and said he was honored. Qin Yun realized that Grandma might not have eaten for a long time. He has some food with him. A few days later, she said the wood in his ring made it much more comfortable here. The guy had already mastered the soul forging technique. If they could get out, she would show him where the peak of the spirit was. Qin Yun asked what kind of place this was. It was built by Emperor Lan Xiao. There's a giant arena at the top. If he can open it, it will attract star battle spirits. Qin Yun thinks, does Lan Xiao's brother in armor look like this? Although star battle spirits are the weakest of the runic battle spirits, they are very easy to obtain. His fire martial spirit has yet to awaken. Only a star martial spirit will be able to awaken it. The guy asked where the pinnacle of the spirit was. Grandmother replied that she was in the Cloud Dragon Mountains, in the north, where the dark north star is. There are many mountain peaks there, but there is a swamp near the spirit peak. When he sees the swamp, he needs to wait for the Dark North Star to appear. After that, he will realize where the Spirit Peak is. She can see that the guy can't wait to get out of here. He said he had a lot of enemies outside. He'd better stick around for a while. The guy said that his mom made a marriage contract between him and the princess of the Tianxiao Empire. When he was betrayed, the Empire decided to marry her off to the new prince. The ceremony will be in a few months. He has to go. She told him to immediately head to the spirit peak and absorb the star battle spirit when he came out. He would even be able to go to the seventh level of body tempering. But if he wanted to get out of here, they had to extract all the power from the dome. He said that they could just absorb all the power. If they took away the power they needed for the dome, it would create an imbalance in the dungeon, and they could get out. These stone slabs are the focusing circle of the nine solar spirits, with which he can draw the energy of the dome. This is the core of the dungeon. It controls the flow of energy. Once he destroys it, he can find a way out. He began to absorb the energy. The dungeon is about to collapse. There are sentries around it, so they will come right away. Grandmother put up a protective dome. Soon, she would be able to use Grandmaster Lan Xiao's ancient technique so that they could leave. It would attract the comet's fall, but it would take a lot of energy. She would need time to recover. After the Blue Star Palace appeared, comets started falling from time to time, but they were never as big as this one. 
Everyone will think it's just a rare event. Grandma Xiao knows what she's doing. Now the Tenchi Empire won't persecute them. Little by little things started to fall apart. Grandmother took his hand. She said they had to go. Everything will collapse soon. Grandma Xiao won't be able to hold on that long. Everything really did fall apart after the explosion. This forbidden technique is terrifying. Its power is comparable to that of a natural disaster. They need to go to the high peak first so Grandma Xiao can recover. After a while, Grandma Xiao finally woke up. She replied that she was fine. She just needed to rest. She is so excited to see the Nine Sons. When her grandmother recovers, she will go to the Battle Wastelands. Since all her enemies are already dead, there is nothing more to do here. And the guy needs to go to the top of the spirit now. He took her advice. Xin Yun hopes to find a stellar martial spirit on top of the spirit. He heard a dog barking or something similar. Xin Yun decided to hide and watch. He climbed up a tree. Someone asked if his dog was barking now. Maybe he found something. The man replied that all their dogs were here. There is no way that only one could have found something. Another man replied that his dog is very sensitive. The man with the scar said they should be careful. They are guarding an ancient mine of spirit metal. They are still exploring it. Their mission is very important. The other said that the Western Palace is too incompetent. Several hundred of their slaves have already died, and they don't send new ones. They've already mined a lot of spirit metal, but no one comes to take it. There's more and more of it, and they have to guard it. The guy realized that there was a mine of high rank spirit metal here. After a simple refining procedure, the metals would become usable. These mines are very important because of the high rank spirit metal in them. These guys seem to be at level 5 body hardening. It shouldn't be too hard to follow them. He heard cries for them to get back to work. Others prayed that they would not be beaten. It was a big pit with metals and lots of people inside. These animals from the Western Palace brought the children of slaves here just to put other slaves to work. Those three are at the seventh level of body hardening. They are old and have quite comfortable homes. He decided to start with just those people. This time he needs to use 36 spiritual signs. Trap sigils can be used to create trap talismans. They are easy to control and he can use them against weak guards. To eliminate those people on the tower, he can use soporific signs to create soporific talismans. If their willpower is weak, they will fall asleep when the talisman touches them. It'll be dawn in an hour. He needs to be done by then. A woman's voice came through telling them not to do it. A man suggested a drink. The other mentioned that after a drink they would kill the girl. But then Chin Yun came into the room. He disposed of the first man, and he threw a talisman on the other one. Another man, on the other hand, you don't even have to waste a talisman. He doesn't even notice what happened behind his back. The girl kept yelling at him not to do it. Just then, Chin Yun touched his shoulder. As soon as the man turned around, the guy immediately punched him in the face. The girl watched the spectacle. Chin Yun threw his sweater over her. The girl wanted to thank him, but he told her to shut up. He told her to use those binding talismans if she was molested again. He still has to rescue the rest of the slaves. The girl replied that there is an underground tunnel that connects all the houses. All the people who were forced to work here are now trapped there. She asked them to be rescued. He replied that he understood and told her not to worry. He kept hearing cries for them to stop. A little later they started thanking him for saving them. The old man said that the people from the Blue Star Palace said that they were hiring fighters. They said that people could bring their children with them, but instead they were all forced to work here. Chin Yun replied that they could worry no more. The bosses and disciples of the Western Blue Palace have been defeated. They should leave this place as soon as possible. The girl said that they were very grateful for his help. There wasn't much high-ranked spiritual metal left here, but she asked him to take it. During the battle with the Western Blue Palace, he must be very careful. The boy replied that he could handle it. He told them to be careful on the way home and not to worry about those people for he would finish them off before he left. He said to report everything to the Temple of Inscriptions, only they could help. The night has passed and a new day has come. The man reported to Brother Xiao that things were bad. One of their high-ranked spiritual metal mines had been destroyed. All the disciples that were protecting it had been killed, and the entire mine was on fire. The man asked who did it. They think it might have been Princess Xiao Yue Mei. After the Forbidden Lands were destroyed by a meteorite, she attacked his men in revenge for Qin Yun. All the warriors and officials who were on good terms with him were killed. The man wondered who else it could be if not this trashy thing. As the first apprentice of the Western Palace, he would capture her. Xiao Shen Qin help her first, but now Yue Mei is in big trouble. She needs to find the girl first. Qin Yun remembered that his grandmother said to wait for the dark blue star to rise. 
Then he would be able to realize where the peak of the spirit was. He saw something glittering on top of the cliff. He went there. The boy realized that these pillars are supposed to support the circle. There should be a secret circle here, but since no one had cleaned it, it was covered with leaves and earth. Chin Yun, as it turned out, was a born janitor. He didn't understand what these spiritual signs were. He can't believe that brother Lan Xiao is still meditating. He wouldn't be able to hear him right now. The guy wondered how long it would take him to clean this place up. He sat down in a circle, after which he began to meditate. The circle was absorbing cosmic energy. It was just unbelievable. Thanks to the golden star technique taught to him by his brother Lan Xiao, the guy can use the star deity. Lan Xiao was once again convinced that this guy was smart. His consciousness was transported to another space. This blue sun gives off a lot of heat. He got inside that sun. There's a wolf sleeping inside here, but he won't be able to wake it up by using consciousness. He needs to look around first. He senses that most of the suns here are already dead. The souls inside are either dead or gone from there. There are many suns in the sky, but they are too far away. They look too much like little lights. The boy wondered what was inside the suns from his world. Many suns here are in groups of two, three or four. Groups of five and six are less common. They all revolve around each other. The nine suns that he knows of seem very rare. The suns also seem to float up and down and never stop rotating. The secret circle at the top of the spirit seems to help the one who uses it find his fighting spirit. This black sphere looks big, but it's tiny compared to its surroundings. Even though it's just a dot in the center, it could move the entire cosmos. It must be really strong. But suddenly she began to consume his consciousness. If she did that, the guy would lose his soul. He's not going to lose. Doesn't matter who it is, he keeps winning. Suddenly the pillars began to sparkle. A golden energy formed around him. After a while, Lan Xiao appeared, who was preparing food. Finally, Qin Yun woke up. He asked what had happened. Lan Xiao replied that he had been sleeping for a month. He had to interrupt his meditation to go out and protect the guy. Qin Yun replied that he felt like he had grown this month. Lan Xiao said that he was still young, so his development hadn't stopped yet. He gave him some soup. All this time, he had been feeding the guy and giving him medicine. No wonder he had grown up. He thanked him and asked if he had managed to get the star battle spirit. The shockwave essence he had was black, but it reflected light, unlike this one which was completely dark. Lan Xiao said that his third battle spirit is here. He needs to use willpower and spiritual essence to activate it. Otherwise, he won't be able to awaken its power. His hand began to glow with flame. He told his brother to look at it. He can change the weight of different objects. This power allows him to make things lighter and heavier. He can easily make this rock weigh 1,000 tons. Lan Xiao said that the more he cultivates, the more his powers change. Not only can he change the weight of an object, more possibilities await him. If he uses it on himself, will be able to absorb the damage that will be inflicted on his body. Qin Yun replied that he really did know a lot. If he added the energy of the shockwave to it, he'll be able to create a double layer of defense. His essence will combine, and he will become even stronger. Lan Xiao said that this black sun martial spirit is good. The guy should be happy with it. There's one more thing. He could help Qin Yun advance to the seventh level of body hardening. Since they are on top, they can absorb the energy of the nine suns faster. He needs to combine the black sun essence with boundless energy, release the black sun flame, distribute it through his bones, and let it into his body. This is the best way for him to ascend to the next level. Lan Xiao thinks he needs another month to do it. This time he can manage on his own, and Lan Xiao goes back to his meditation. He began, a month later, he was finally able to ascend to the seventh level of body hardening. I mean, he was 16 years old. He saw a note there. Lan Xiao wrote that he had found the spiritual medal of his in the spatial ring. The guy should have already ascended to the seventh level of body tempering. He needs to put three tons of high-ranked bone metal and 300 dragon bones into the furnace in the spatial ring. This would give him the high-ranked bone metal. Of course, he would add more spiritual marks and strengthen this bone metal hammer. Another month later, he was done. During that time, the guy became a caveman. He noticed that he smelled just awful. He needs to wash and change his clothes. Qin Yun also remembered that Xiao Yue Lan and Qin Zheng's wedding ceremony would be held in 20 days. He needs to take a shower and head to Tianqi City. Tianqi City. Girls looked at him and said, he was beautiful. His body looks just beautiful. Meanwhile, Qin Yun thought about joining Queen Ye's son's wedding ceremony. He changed his clothes and cut his hair. 
Someone said that in these couple of months all the disciples of the Western Blue Palace and Tian Shao Empire had been killed by Xiao Yuemei. She had killed them to avenge Qin Yun. Some of their families were also wiped out. They seemed to have a good relationship with Xiao Yan Lun. It was a pity that this beauty would die soon. Qin Yun couldn't believe what he had just heard. He walked over to those people and asked if Xiao Yuemei was in danger right now. The guy replied that he was good for asking him. But then the woman interrupted him and offered to tell him herself. Everyone knows that she crossed Xiao Yan Lun's path. But they don't know why she was brought here to the Tian Xiao Empire. Considering how many people she has killed, she could be awaiting execution. But there are many who support her after all. Almost all the people she killed were bad. Xin Yun thanked the girl for the valuable information. There must be ulterior motives in Xiao Yuemei's capture and her arrival in the Empire. Perhaps she is being used to pressure Xiao Weilan into marrying without resistance. Xiao Yuemei has a mirror martial tout. But she once said that she can't copy her sister's powerful martial spirit. She can only copy the purple flame dragon spirit and the willpower spirit. This means that Xiao Yuelan has a third martial spirit that is too powerful even for her own sister. Dragon martial spirits are related to beast spirits because dragons are divine beasts. Xiao Yuelan has a sacred spirit, a willpower spirit, and a mysterious black spirit. This could all be because she obtained the deity tomb map. Mei Lian's fighting spirit isn't bad either. Guy hopes she can hide it. The mansion of spiritual signs, Qin Yun came to Elder Duan's house. He couldn't believe that, that the guy was still alive. He noticed that Qin Yun had changed. He was now taller and much stronger. Qin Yun asked if he knew anything about Xiao Yue Mei. Surely she must be under constant surveillance. Could the elder help the guy form a group to rescue her? The guy will definitely repay him. The elder was fine with it. When he was defeated in a fight with the man in black and Qin Jing Feng, he pretended to be dead to survive and decided to help the guy. The boy was glad he had survived that attack. Recently, Ji Wu Feng, Mu Rong, and Ho Jun sold him the corpses of beasts in exchange for money. He thinks they want to save it too, so these people can help him. The elder is going to meet with them tonight. If everything goes smoothly, the scout he sent earlier will come back and give them details about Xiao Yue Mei's imprisonment. The boy thanked the elder. He said to give them this bag of coins as a token of his gratitude. The elder replied that those guarding her must be in the martial spirit realm. A guy wouldn't be able to resist them with that level. And even if the elder reveals himself, he won't be able to attack. But he will give him everything he has and help him make a plan. Qin Yun replied that the girl is a good person. The series of murders she committed had something to do with him. He survived through luck, so he is obligated to save her. The elder noticed that this child treasures his friends a lot. The elder said he should be prepared for anything. They might see a connection between him and the soul-forging berserker. He suggested the boy go to the temple and rest. He would call him when the time was right. And he went back to that familiar room. There was a knock on his door. It was an old man. He told the guy not to say anything and just follow him. He walked into the room where the pink-haired girl was. She introduced herself as Meng Fei Lin. Xiao Yuelan used to pretend to be her. The girl asked, he had heard of her before. She knows Yuelan, so she went with old man Si and the others to help him. She asked if she is not welcome here. He asked what she meant. He would be glad if a master at the seventh level of body hardening joined them. After that, Heo Jun and Mu Jun Daren came in. And of course, Si Wu Feng. He greeted the guy and introduced himself before introducing the other two. They had heard about him from Elder Duan. The guy replied that it was only because of the Elder that he could save Yue Mei along with them. He was very grateful for their help. Wu Feng said they are all friends of Yue Mei. Her rescue is only a matter of time. But Qin Yun must not let the other people know that he is still alive. If he wants to join the wedding ceremony at night, they can find people to protect him and keep him from getting hurt. Failing replied that the great elder of the inscription temple was very upset when he heard of his death. Jun Daren said that he had already finished investigating. They will go to the wedding ceremony. Wu Feng noticed that his golden bone cultivation was complete. He asked if the guy was at the seventh level of body hairpin. Qin Yun noticed that even a girl couldn't see his cultivation level, and he was easily able to do so. The guy replied that it was all due to luck. Jun Daren said that with three fighters of the seventh level of body hardening, they could easily save her. He was the only one who wasn't at the seventh level of body hardening. Elder Duan came. He said that Yue Mei is locked in a tower in Xiaoyu's mansion. 
This mansion is northwest of here, 10,000 meters away. The location of this place is an advantage for them. Wu Feng said that he thought she was locked in Tianxiao Tower, after all. This is the biggest villa here, and it is much bigger than that mansion. There are very few people in the mansion, so it is easy to guard. Tian Xiao Tower has too many people, and is difficult to keep an eye on. At a similar time, the nobles of Tian Xiao Empire lived in Tian Xiao Tower. The number of people visiting continues to increase, so the guards need to be on guard. The red circles mark the observation towers. From above, Xiao Yu Mountain looks like a playground for aristocratic children. But it is actually a secret base, built by the Tian Xiao and Tian Qin empires to get useful information from spies. This place also works as a warehouse where they exchange items in the dark, and there's serious security there too. As he knows, there will be one guard in the martial path realm, and a few at the ninth level of body hardening. The observation towers are guarded by a total of about 10 people, while Xiao Yu Tower is guarded by a group of seven people. Fei Lin replied that they could just fly there. Wu Feng asked what about Qin Yun's stealth skills, whether he was confident in them. Qin Yun replied that it wouldn't be a problem. He could use the Black Sun Battle Spirit to hide in the night. At that time, it was all decided. Wu Feng will go first along with Fei Lin and distract the fighters who are at the ninth level of body hardening and the rest. Mu Rong and Ho Lan will place fire talismans to set the important rooms of the vault on fire. This will distract the guards and they will go to put out the fire. Qin Yun asked, what about the martial path realm fighter? He didn't expect Brother Sai to be so calm and calculating while making a plan. He also knows what his companions are strong in. Being friends with him is very convenient. The elder said that they could use spirit shocking poison. In the Tianqi Empire, there is a hidden black market in Lin Ying Tower. There is an auction being held there where the spirit shocking poison will be auctioned. This is an ancient drug. After spreading this powder, a person in the martial path realm would lose their soul and become the subjugation of another. He never thought it would be auctioned off. Their temple opened to this black market. The auction is in five days and they'll need a lot of money. But the elder will help them. Qin Yun said that he would create some mid-rank soporific and binding talismans to counter stronger warriors. The guy said she had been hanging on to him for too long. The girl replied that she hadn't. A couple days later, an elder burst in and said it was bad. The man who wanted to sell the spirit shocking poison refused to sell it. Most likely he was afraid that his identity would be revealed. Phelan said that it might not be that bad. It was originally a ploy. Someone wanted to use the black market of the inscription temple to sell this drug and then use it against the temple. Qin Yun asked how she knew. She replied that the creator of the shocking poison spirit had some connection to her family. Her father and great-grandfather had come to town, and she had heard them talking about it. It wasn't long before they themselves found out about everything. Someone tried to attack them. It might be related to the Western Blue Star Palace. The elder is going to go back and have someone investigate the matter. Fei Lin replied that she knew who had the drug, but Head Duan wouldn't let them take the risk, so she didn't say it in front of him. Jin Yun asked who had it. They should take him away. Her great-grandfather told her that it was in the hands of a young lady. She is at the ninth level of body tempering and holds a powerful position in the Tianxiao Tower. Only Xiao Xuan Qin fits this description. It is also said that she cooperated with Qi to obtain the ingredients for the drug. They were the ones who did it at her request. Mu Rong asked what she wanted to do to him. Xiao Wangchina had recently appeared in the Forbidden Lands. She probably planned to use this drug on Xiao Ruiwen and make her tell everything about the soul-forging technique. Wu Feng replied that they couldn't take the drug away from her under normal circumstances. He suggested that they try to steal it at night. Even if they have a small chance of luck, it's worth a try. Qin Yun agreed and said that they needed to start preparing. These are the talismans he created. It's a smoke talisman that blocks the enemy's senses. He handed them out to the others. Wu Feng asked if she would have a problem when she dealt with the observation towers. He will go to the tower together with Brother Yun. She replied that with so many mascots, it would not be a problem. He said that Mu Rong and Ho Lan San should set fire to the storage room. It contains important things for the people of Xiaoyu Mansion, so they will start extinguishing them first. Elder Duan must not find out about this. After discussing the plan, they will leave the inscription temple. There will be many martial path realm people in the mansion. They need to be careful. Xiaoyu Mansion. They decided to split up. After that, they were near Xiaoyu Tower. The sentinel stood there and noticed something. Failing appeared in front of him and attached a talisman to his head. She took over the observation towers. 
Chin Yun uses his spiritual energy to check the area. There's no one on the first floor, no traps detected either. If they made noise, he would have to use spiritual energy to muffle the sound. There was nothing here either. Wu Feng thought that Xiaoyu Tower also had storage rooms. He expected that there would be many valuable items, but the second floor was also empty. There's nothing on the third and fourth floor either. An old man appeared and asked who was here. They were surprised that they had already been discovered. Qin Yun threw his talismans. Wu Feng summoned the Blades of Fate. He unleashed his spiritual power and aimed his Blades of Fate at that old man. The old man had clearly underestimated them, and he was beginning to regret it. He used his shield to block their attacks. This old man was fast. Wu Feng appeared behind him and wanted to strike. His attack was successful and nothing prevented it. He had dealt with a person at the ninth level of body tempering in an instant. Qin Yun realized that Wu Feng was really strong. The old man fell down. Wu Feng replied that they came too late. Yue Mei isn't here, but she was taken away not too long ago. Qin Yun noticed the key to the vault. Wu Feng wanted to take him away, but Qin Yun stopped him, for this was some kind of formation. He hit the formation with his hammer. The formation broke apart and golden energy spurted out from there. The tower began to shake. Qin Yun thought that they must have finished. Wu Feng took the key and began to examine it. But there was no time for that. The tower was collapsing. They had to get out of here now. The people below noticed them flying overhead. The workers said it was bad. The warehouse is on fire. Just like Wu Feng said, people started putting out the fire because of the valuable items. Then they sent two or three people to chase after the intruders. Mu Rong and Heo Jun were up to the task. The people chased after Wu Feng and Qin Yun. Qin Yun threw his talismans at them. They exploded. Now they don't chase them anymore. A little later, Elder Duan scolded them, calling them too brazen. Qin Yun replied that everything ended well. He asked if the Elder knew where Yue Mei might have been transported to, and if he would help them. The Elder said that if she was in the tower, there would be a guard of the Warpath Realm with her, and they wouldn't come back from there. He can try to find out where she is, but they shouldn't act like they did this time. They've raised the alarm and he can't guarantee he'll be able to find out her location. The Elder is gone. Wu Feng showed the key they found in Xiaoyu's tower. It was found under protection, so it must be valuable. Qin Yun said that the key was on the table with spiritual signs on it. He thinks that the key could absorb energy. Phelan said that his room is so comfortable. Qin Yun started to get angry and told her to get down from there. Her great-grandfather once said that Xiaoyu Mansion is in a dark place. It's always dark and raining, making it a convenient place to store demon meat and other such things. A key that needs spiritual energy should be a tomb key. Wu Feng speculated that it could open the entrance to Tian Xiao's tomb. Ho Jun said that this was the place where the heroes of the empire were buried. And to be buried in the tomb, one must be either a member of the imperial family or a person who has made great contributions to the Tian Xiao empire. Mu Rong asked how about digging up Xiao Yan Long's tomb from the Tian Xiao empire. They all laughed. Wu Feng said that they should think about it in the long term. They must first make sure that the key could open the tomb, and then have at least an eighth level of body tempering. Once the Tian Xiao Empire discovered that the key had been lost, they would send more powerful warriors to guard the tomb. Feilin said, Tian Xiao Empire lost such an important key, they won't tell anyone about it. Head Duan knows that they have this key now, which saves them from his reprimand. But if he finds out that they are going to rob the tomb, he will be very angry. Wu Feng replied that they hadn't found Yue Mei which meant that she had been transferred to Tian Xiao Tower through Tian Xiao Mansion. In most cases, anyone can enter the tower. People go there to eat or stay overnight. But since recently, you have to pay a hundred coins to enter. Qin Yun said that he would investigate everything at night. He can hide in the night and investigate the mansion and check for traps. Failing would make him a disguise, so the people in the tower wouldn't know he was the same. At night, just as he said that, Qin Yun sprang into action. He's been dressed up as a beautiful girl. No one would think it's actually a guy. The guard said that ordinary people can't come in here. The other asked if he wanted to have some fun together because his shift would soon be over. A single gold coin appeared in Qin Yun's hand. He tossed it to the guards. They missed it. They think this woman must be a noblewoman to have such valuable items in her spatial ring. Qin Yun thanked them. He himself didn't know that he could do this. The other guards threatened to file for divorce because this girl had stolen their hearts. It's a good thing no one recognized him. He walked into the hall where other girls were dancing, entertaining the audience. He was pissed that no one had started hitting on him yet. But a man approached him and asked if he could keep her company if she came here alone. The disguised Qin Yun agreed. This man looked good so he would start with him. The guy was starting to get angry because what kind of person is this? 
who immediately gropes at the first meeting. He wonders why these walls seem unusually thin. Perhaps there's a secret room nearby. In the shower, he screamed for the man to get his hands off him. The man's name is Zhang Ziyue. He asked her name and why she was here alone. Xin Yun introduced himself as Liu Yao. He said that he was looking for his cousin. She also met a man here and never came home. Zhang Zhu took her chin and said that he had been here for five or six days already. She could tell him what her cousin looked like. He might have met her before. Qin Yun replied that she was pretty, but he was told that some special girl had recently come here. It might be her sister who calls herself by an assumed name. He had already promised himself that he would blow that pervert's head off. The man replied that he had heard from some of the waiters that a certain beauty was staying here. He did not know if it was the cousin she was looking for. The man had been groping him for so long that if he couldn't find anything, all his efforts were for nothing. There are a lot of people on the street. He better use his spiritual energy to levitate and enter through the window on the second floor. He climbed into the room. After that, he heard someone coming. There walked a woman in a robe. Qin Yun of course recognized her. It was Yue Mei and Yue Lan's aunt. She began to undress. Qin Yun knows that it is too immoral. He shouldn't look at it. The woman had the feeling that there was someone else here. The guy was protected by a black battle spirit shield. Apparently the woman was just imagining things. He was almost exposed, but he realized his aura might have leaked a little. Then she realized she was definitely feeling something and aimed her punch in that direction. Qin Yun dodged, but he couldn't hold on and started to fall. The woman noticed that it was a nice girl, but then she spotted the wig in the water. Qin Yun admitted that it was him. She just couldn't believe that he was really alive. The woman thought it was a ghost. He took her hand. Qin Yun asked, she really felt that way. Xiao Xuanqin still thought that he was just a ghost, but she could clearly feel him with her touch. Qin Yun said that he is a ghost. He still had a lot of unfinished business. If he didn't let go of it, he would never ascend. He was just mocking her. The woman asked if he was laughing at her. She did not think then and sent him to the Forbidden Land and heard him. Qin Yun touched her shoulders and said that he was here to save Yue Mei. He asked if she knew where her niece was. She replied that a few hours ago, Yue Mei was still here, but she had been sent to Tianqin Palace, and no one would save her now. If she was here, she would be guarded by a martial spirit. No one would come near her, but someone was already approaching them. They noticed that. Xiao Sinsin told him to bend over. The guy seemed to see something he didn't need to see. He immediately turned in the opposite direction because he shouldn't be looking at this. The woman asked what they needed. One of them was Master Wei, and the other knows that he was sent to the Forbidden Lands. Even so, he doesn't know how strong that old man is. His aura is the strongest in this room. Apparently, it's his fighting spirit. Master Wei said she still has the spirit shock toxin. She can give it to them right now. Meanwhile, the guy wondered what Fei Ling had given him, for the makeup wouldn't wash off. Xiao Senkin replied that she had gotten Yashin San herself. She asked why she had to give it to them. The old man replied that, according to the agreement, they want to use the Soul Destroyer, but it's outside the abandoned lands, so it must be destroyed. It seems his previous expression was correct. The woman replied that it had been obtained through her hard work, and she would not give it away so easily. The old man said that the princes and ministers were worried that she was protecting Xiao Yue, so she should give up the Soul Destroyer. If she doesn't, they will put it on public display. A woman should understand the consequences. Master Wei said that by then, she would be like a master-turned-demon woman. She only laughed at his expression. The prince thought she was like that, and thank God. He could betray his own sister, let alone his aunt. It's unexpected, but Xiao Yanlong is more cruel than he expected and wants to send his aunt to her death. The old man said she was possessed and shouldn't blame him for being ruthless. Master Wei asked, why not let Lao Tzu enjoy it first? This old man is wrong, for Qin Yun would never let him touch even her hair. She used a soul disruptor. It was a bad thing for them. Master Wei used his needles and the old man used the palm technique. These attacks caught up with her. Master Wei said that even though it's a forbidden drug, it won't kill her. Now she will definitely die from its poison. A hand with a talisman appeared from the water. A fireball began to accumulate there. The old man asked what was going on. Qin Yun blurted out and replied that the hero was rescuing a beauty. He took her robe, after which he threw it over the woman. She has been poisoned by the same poison as Ding Tianchen's father. To cure this poison, you need a priceless fruit. I think he has one. He found this fruit and put it in her mouth. The venom began to dissipate and the guy told her to wait a bit. Master Wei asked how he got the priceless fruit. Who is it anyway? The guy replied that he was his master Qin Yun. Could it be that he didn't recognize him? He marveled that this guy was still alive. 
He told her to get some rest. Master Wei wanted to ask something, but he shut him up with his technique. An old man ran up to him. After that, Qin Yun approached him. He can't be dead when creeps like the Master are living the good life. Not only is he not dead, but he wants payback for all his dirty deeds. His son used a woman to practice his evil arts. It's what his father taught him. He may look innocent, but he is just as evil. The guy asked if he also wanted to practice his magic, but Xiao Xuan Qin, it's time to teach him a lesson. Xin Yun took his fiery soul. The old man said that he had learned the soul purification technique. Master Wei said that it was only an incentive to injure that girl who stole the soul destroyer. He begged him to let him go. Now that the soul destroyer had been taken away, it could be said that it had already been destroyed. If those two weren't trying to hurt her, they wouldn't have ended up here. Although Qin Yun had lied to her and peeped at her while taking a bath, but he had saved her so she wouldn't forget it. The old man asked how he survived. Even masters of the arts had a hard time surviving there. Qin Yun replied that he was the one who released the soul destroyer. He summoned a meteorite to destroy the abandoned land. So they were fools to think the guy was dead. The old man said that he was a veteran of the Tianxiao Empire. He can't take his soul out of him. This is the soul of a golden lion. Xiao Xinqin said that she seemed to have another problem with her body. Master Wei replied that it was another of his poisons. She's already dead. It's time for her funeral. He started laughing. Qin Yun said that he had lost his mind. But after that, he shut him up. The old man said that he has mastered the art of soul purification, and it will not end well for him. He will die a horrible death. A little later, he laid her on the bed and changed her clothes. The woman said her inner energy was already poisoned. She asked to be killed because she could not be saved. If he meets Yue Mei and Yue Lan, he should apologize to them for her. Qin Yun said that his internal energy contained a black soul. Perhaps he could nourish her poison without harming himself. He can control the poison, so it should be easy. He apologized to her. After that, he bit her finger. She replied that it was nothing. He used his technique. She asked how that could be. Xin Yun replied that the poison needle was still in her. She didn't need to worry. If she resents him, she should forgive Qin Yun. He is here to save her. Xiao Xuanqin said that she understood what he was getting at. She took off her clothes and finally the needle came out. All that remained was to remove the poison. He would have to touch her body. As long as it's to save her, she's fine with it. It was difficult for him. Even though he'd seen her naked, he was concentrating hard on getting her out and not touching her again. She stepped out and thanked him. She was all right now. He swore he didn't have any vulgar thoughts during the procedure. She replied that he had looked at her before. Qin Yun replied that it was not true. She hadn't been married for 30 years, so she was probably unaffected. Since she was feeling better, he would go. He wished her a good recovery. Qin Yun is afraid that when she gets better, she will beat him up. Shou Senkin told him to wait. He replied that it looked like he was going to be killed after all. She asked how she could hit him. He saved her twice. And what the guy did to her, no one can know about that. He noticed she had no shoes, which caused him to lift her in his arms. Qin Yun asked why such a mature girl doesn't know how to wear shoes, and she still needs to rest. He laid her on the bed. Xiao Xuan Qin didn't expect that not only did he not die, but he had also learned the soul refining art. It seems like he and Yue Mei are a good couple. They can do things that adults can't even think of doing. Qin Yun replied that he and her don't have any relationship, but she shouldn't worry. He is still going to save her. She asked how dare the guy say that. He showed up just now because he loves Yue Mei according to his aunt. He noticed that women change their personalities before you know it. The reason Yue Mei wants to kill these guys is not about him at all. The old bastards of the Tianxiao Empire and Xiao Yanlong Empire are thinking every day about how to change their princess for more profit. Yue Mei watched her sister being sold and couldn't do anything about it. After all this, she decided to kill them to vent her anger. The Tianxiao Empire didn't take Xiao Xuanqin seriously and still gave her to Master Wei. Perhaps they wanted to sell her. But now Master Wei is dead and everyone will think she killed him. He apologized to her. She said he could laugh. She wanted to ask the guy something. Why he saved her if he was supposed to hate her. He has lived in the Imperial Palace since he was a child and knows how important true love is to a child in a royal family. Yue is very attached to her. If she found out that the guy didn't save her, she would hate him forever. My aunt thought he might have had feelings for her after all. She asked if he was the one who attacked Xiao Yu Tower. The guy answered at once and held nothing back. So, in other words, the key is now in his hands. But this key is not so small. Xiao Xuanqin replied that it was the key to the emperor's tomb. She has Yue Lan's wedding dowry. The painting of the buried fairy Wu Yue Lan has a lot in common with her mother. 
Now this painting is buried with her, she wants to get it out. Yue Lan and Yue Mei's mothers are buried in the Imperial Crypt. After the event at Xiao Mountain House, there were more guards in the palace. She asked if the guy was sure he could save her. Of course, Auntie was right. He could fly to the palace. But now the engagement was getting closer. There must be many masters there now. She told him not to worry, for she still had the Soul Destroyer. He could take it if he needed it. There's also an antidote in the box. If he takes it, his soul can't be poisoned for 10 days. Qin Yun asked why she suddenly stopped participating in the auction. The people from the palace came to her and asked her to take him to the black auction. But later she found out that they were going to marry Yue Lan. So she decided to use the soul destroyer to save Yue Mei and Yue Lan. But Yan Long sensed the danger and took Yue Mei away that same night. The emperor is rumored to be sick right now and many factors are controlled by Yan Long. What kind of conclusion must he have to be so eager to marry Yue Lan? She can't even imagine. All he has to do now is to save Yue Mei. As long as she knows Yue Mei is okay, she'll be better off. His marriage to Yue Lan was his mother's idea. Their engagement contract has the emperor's bloody fingerprint in it. Guy would like to see them cancel it. The woman replied that after that, there would be no turning back. She wants to help Yue Lan too. But running there headlong is a big danger. But he's already made up his mind. Qin Yun asked why she wanted to find a soul destroyer. She replied that she was having problems with her fighting techniques. Perhaps only with his help could she solve them. Qin Yun asked. She is sure of it. He's also knowledgeable in the healing arts, so he can test her. He noticed that her spirit was sick. She replied that he had been ill for several years and his form was lost. As far as he knew, a spirit became weaker if she didn't have enough energy when transforming. It takes her spirit to absorb the other. This is the most effective way to infuse it with energy. He will merge the spirit she has extracted into the elements, so that her spirit can begin the absorption. He's never done one before, so he's not sure it'll work out right. So she has to decide for herself. No matter what, she would have to recover her spirit or she would never be able to practice martial arts. Auntie asked what needed to be done. He decided to take a look. Right now, he would use his spiritual power to absorb the soul gate and then build a soul road into the inner Yuan to connect the martial spirit inside and outside. She thought he was sweating because something was going wrong. Suddenly there was such a warm feeling in her belly. She liked it. Now he's going to put the spirit in him. He said not to resist or it would be bad. She was starting to feel something again. The feeling made her legs start to shake. Qin Yun said that there was not enough energy in this spirit. He would have to do it all over again. He replied that he was fine and they could continue. It would all work out if she awakened the soul in her inner Yuan. She thought he would have to do it all over again. He had already achieved mastery in the art and soul refining. If he obtained more martial souls, he would be able to refine stronger souls as well. Right now, she's going to get that very feeling once more. It happened. It could be the response of the inner Yuan. She could feel it. Finally, Auntie would be able to move forward. It finally worked out for him. Xiaoxuan Qin said that his skills are good. He treats people so well. No wonder Yue Mei was so attached to him. She thanked him for giving her such a precious martial soul. Qin Yun replied that he was indebted to her, so he used two spirits on her at once. The guy helped her get rid of the poison, and it didn't affect her too much. She told him not to worry, because she didn't blame him. He told her to find a place where she could regain her strength. She needs to focus her mind on stabilizing the inner elements, and let her soul absorb them. And then her spirit will return to normal. She said she understood. It was time for him to return to the tower. Now that she has regained her strength, she can set foot on the path of martial arts again. And her strength is enough to defend against the Tian Xiao Empire. He thanked him again. His aunt thinks he might have plans for her. He's such a good man. She asked. Qin Yun is sure he wants to save Yue Mei alone. Right now the palace is well guarded, so she can help him. Qin Yun replied that if he couldn't save her, she would have time to advance in martial arts and could help her on her own. She's hiding in the Yunlong Mountains. With this map, he will be able to find her. She told him to be careful, and that the heavens would protect him. The Temple of Inscriptions. There was a knock on his door. Fei Ling flew into his room and asked what had happened these days. He replied that Yue Mei was now in the palace. Elder Duan said it's a big problem. They say he recently invited masters from the Blue Spirit Palace to the palace. Qin Yun replied that he was familiar with the palace and would easily find his way in. It was his duty to save her before the wedding. Mu Rong said that just recently, Xiao Xuan Qin was put on the wanted list because she killed Master Wei and Tian Xuan's teacher, Wu Yuan. Huo Jun said that this incident shook the three empires. Tian Xiao Empire suspects that it was Xiao Xuan Qin who attacked Xiao Yu Tower. 
Wu Feng added that because of this, there are more security guards in the city, Qin Yun said, and not to worry. He thanked them for helping him during these hard days. Fei Ling thought that he was simply peerless. Wu Feng told him to be careful. Mu Rong replied that there was one more thing he needed to know. Qin Zheng Feng had advanced to the eighth level. Yi Qi Huang, the power behind these rulers, is too scary. Elder Duan said they would go to the engagement ceremony, but will the boy be able to get in? Qin Yun will ask his family to let him enter the palace for the engagement party. They will meet at the palace in three days, Imperial City, Qinling River. There is a dam deep in this gorge that prevents the river from entering the canal. He could easily fall into it. The corridor leads to several places. The Forbidden Palace is in the northern part of the palace. It is where criminals are held. Some princesses are said to be imprisoned there. He remembers that Taisha's sister said that at the fork, one should only go to the right. The secret passage is very well camouflaged. If someone doesn't know they are hunting here, no one will be able to find them. He's inside. Now it's time to find Yue Mei. The darkness technique is very handy for hiding in the shadows. Unless someone shines a light, they won't be found. Strangely, he hasn't sensed the practitioner's aura for half an hour now. He thinks they may not be in the palace. He saw other people and hid. Someone said that Xiao Yue Mei was locked up in Tianjin. She killed an eighth step practitioner. She would have turned them to rubble in three moves. He moved closer to them to better hear their conversation. The employee said it's all awful but thinks it's exaggerated. The guy realized that something was wrong here. Tianzi is the most mysterious place in the Forbidden Palace. The defense of this place is amazing, extremely powerful people are kept there. There's no way Yue Mei could be locked up there. He hadn't been to Tianjin, but he had seen the map of the Forbidden Palace. If someone passes through this barrier, it will alert the entire palace. Qin Yun thinks he can use the shadow portal technique to sneak in. He went inside. She was trapped in here somewhere. No wonder he couldn't sense her before. Then he noticed something in the window. Some woman said the girl had killed so many strong masters. She'll break her jaw in revenge. This woman was most likely the Empress of Tianxiao, as well as a martial artist. Yue Mei and Yue Lan are very talented, so Xiao Yanlong is afraid of them. Their aunt was an enemy of the Empire before she died, so the Empress decided to pay them back in full for it. He opened the bottle. The Empress realized it was a soul destroyer. She thought it was Xiao Xuan Qin. Qin Yun was already walking towards Yue Mei. The Empress said that her aunt was being sought by the Three Empires and the Blue Spirit Palace. If she does anything to her, she will die a horrible death. Qin Yun helped the girl. She swallowed the pill he gave her. After that, she started coughing up blood. At first, her eyes clouded over. But now they had finally cleared up and she recognized Qin Yun who was alive. Qin Yun said that he was here to save her. She started crying and screaming that he was alive. She thought he was dead. He hugged her and apologized for not coming sooner and making her suffer. The girl had scars all over her body. Luckily, he had taken clothes for her so she could change. The Empress asked why the guy still hadn't died. Xin Yun replied that the Demon King had kept him alive to clean up all the trash like her. He used his technique on her again. The Empress screamed that he was trying to pull her spirit out. Xiao Yuomai noticed that the guy had attained mastery in the soul refining technique. He asked the girl what kind of spirit it was. A mirror appeared in Yue Mei's hand. It showed it was a white spirit. Jin Yun could use it to power up his hammer. The Empress called him a demon and said he would die. Yue Mei slapped her face with her foot and said her words are so poisonous. She is the one who carries out punishments. But she is the one who is being punished. Jin Yun said that someone was coming. He slammed the Empress against a pillar. The Empress is dead. Yue Mei said to put that corpse away in his ring. Xin Yun did so. He took the girl behind his back and said that it was time to get her out of Tianyang. He said that this aura was familiar to him. This is the aura of Ye Chang Chao, the father of Queen Ye and the patriarch of the Ye family. The Ye family is very strong. They defeated the Qin Imperial Dynasty and finally achieved great success. Ye Chang Chao arrived in Tianzi. It was a soul destroyer, he thought. He sprayed a special powder in this yard to prevent her detection. Though the aura is faint, but he can discern it. They went this way. He thinks it's strange, since they might have found out about this passage to the Forbidden Palace. Qin Yun said that they needed to get out of here faster. He took her in his arms again and ran with her. Ye Chang Chao found them. He was already following them. Qin Yun was surprised that he had found them so quickly. Yue Mei assumed it was because of the Soul Destroyer. He was getting close. The cloud technique can only travel 70-80 meters per second. But the one that catches up with them rushes at 200 to 300 meters per second. He was going to hit. This blow injured Qin Yun, but he didn't give up that easily, even when injured. Ye Chang Chao approached him from behind. He needs just a little more time to escape through the secret tunnel and save her. 
Ye Chang Chao shouted about the guy still being alive and asked where the queen's body was. Qin Yun told him to calm down and asked if he wasn't at all curious about how he got out of the abandoned lands. Ye Chang Chao asked what the guy took advantage of. Not only did he protect himself with the soul purifier, but he also escaped from there. Qin Yun could tell him this, but if he promised that he and Yue Mei could leave the palace safely, Qin Yun would give him the technique he learned there. Ye Chang Chao replied that they were in his hands and they were still putting conditions on him. They had just killed his sister. They knew that the queen's surname was Lu, and she was from the Lu family. But according to him, it was Ye Chang Chao's sister. Qin Yun said that his blood was indeed dirty. Ye Chang Chao said that Yue Mei should be with them. Only then will her sister get married fairly. He will sever Qin Yun's meridians. It will be his revenge for his sister. He will kill him with his own hands. And when the guy dies, he'll be waiting for his story about this technique. He wanted to strike him, but Yue Mei stepped forward to use her strength. But then Ye Chang Chao was pierced with a spear by the man behind him. It was a man with a scar on his face. Qin Yun shouted out that it was his father. He replied that he knew the guy wasn't dead and laughed. Ye Chang Chao kicked down. Ye Chang Chao to say that Qin Long, that is father, found the Dragon King's weapon. Qin Long started poking him with his weapon and asked if he still wanted to injure Qin Yun or not so much anymore. Qin Yun told Father Emperor to wait so that he could draw out his spirit. Ye Chang Chao was telling Qin Long to stop him, but the Emperor gave permission for his son to continue. Qin Yun said that he wanted to destroy his meridians, and now he wanted to repay in the same coin. Ye Chang Chao told him to stop because he could do anything he wanted for him, even marry Yue Lan. But it didn't work, of course. Yue Mei replied that it was the spirit of the thunderstorm. She will devour it. Xin Long said that he had a rare spirit, but such an irony of fate that he would meet the end at the hands of his son. Qin Yun asked, didn't he expect things like this to come back for him? Ye Chong Chao said not to rejoice so much, for the Blue Spirit Palace would not let them leave. Qin Long told him to go to hell. That was his finishing blow. Qin Yun and Yue Mei said that he was beautiful. Yue Mei asked. He appeared here in a very timely manner. Was he really hiding here all this time? Qin Long replied that yes, he did. He had failed due to a gentle breakdown and was consumed by darkness, leading to many things he couldn't prevent. His son suffered a lot, but fortunately he was fine. Otherwise he would have felt guilty for the rest of his life. Yi Mei knows that he is the youngest and weakest of the three emperors, so his empire is weak as well. Ideally, he should have practiced a lot to become stronger, but things went wrong. The traitors took away a lot of his strength. He had lost so much strength. In the meantime, Qin Yun was injured. Qin Yun said that he looked beautiful and asked what he used to be like that. Qin Long replied that he was born so beautiful. Yue Mei asked, wasn't the Dragon King's spear lost? It's the strongest weapon in the three empires and he found it. Qin Long replied that his grandfather had it. It turns out that this old man was alive and he gave it to him. That old man is now in hiding. However, in two or three days, Yue Mei's sister Yue Mei will have an engagement party. She asked if Qin Yun would go with her. Qin Long said that in the beginning they were supposed to marry each other, so what changed? His son would definitely not leave Yue Lan in trouble. Qin Long will follow them later. Yue Mei wants to go too, but if she gets caught, there will be trouble. Qin Long chased them away after all he needs to train. Qin Yun said goodbye to him. The Temple of Inscriptions. Qin Yun said that Yue Mei has suffered a lot. But fortunately, she is here, and now resting in her room. He asked the master who would be at the engagement party. Elder Duan said that from those who would come, he could single out a few practitioners from the Blue Spirit Palace. Emperor Tian Qi and Emperor Tian Xiao are in the palace. Most of the families in the empire are still in the imperial city, but will be in the palace in two days. Qi Wendian was overshadowed by the incident where his soul was scattered, and he would definitely settle it with those in the Blue Spirit Palace right now. The guy needs to rest first. During the engagement, his group of people will help them. Qin Yun was happy to see his father, but he wondered what happened to his scarred face. When he uses internal energy, there is a similar pattern on his body. He assumed the scar on his father's face was a dragon pattern. If that's the case, the father is very strong. Duan's medicine is very easy to use. Although his back hurts, his wound has healed. There shouldn't be any trace of it tomorrow. He can turn the Empress's soul into a royal hammer, but he doesn't know how to use Chang Chao's soul yet. If Chao is here, maybe she can help him. Fortunately, this giant spirit king hammer is made of the best spirit iron. He succeeded. Such power could truly be called the real her giant royal hammer, but he returned it to its previous form. Elder Duan came to him. 
He said he had just learned one thing that could seriously hurt him, but he had to say it. Palace News says Chin Long died of serious injuries due to a fire. It was announced today that Prince Chin Jung Fung will ascend the throne after the wedding ceremony. Chin Yun knows that he is not dead. The Emperor and the others must have known that Yue Mei was saved and Queen Tian Xiao and Chang Chao disappeared. People were sitting there having fun, but then they heard the roar of the beast. Someone asked where the moon beast came from. It was so beautiful. It was Chin Yun. He should thank Master Duan for coming back. People crowded around him. Now they knew that Chin Yun was not dead. One thought it was really him. Though his face has changed a bit, one remembers his eyes that are full of will. He even rides a beast that he could even summon himself. Someone speculated that he might have learned soul purification after the meteorite fell. He was stopped by the guards. He called them idiots. He was called the fifth prince of the Tian Qin Empire. Whoever dares to stop him will die. People were sitting in the banquet hall. Eastern Blue Spirit Palace. Fei Lin said that Yang Shi Yue definitely doesn't know about Qin Yun's death and resurrection, so she is sad. She has so many love rivals. Next to her, Du Gui and Ho Xingfei were sitting next to her. Du Gui thought that every day is the same with his disciples. Everyone wanted to stop Qin Yun. The guard reported Qin Yun's arrival. He ran off and said the guy was alive. The Empress and Qin Zheng Feng were clearly not thrilled. Everyone began to marvel at how the guy arrived on the beast on horseback. Master Yan couldn't believe her eyes. She thought it was wonderful that her student was alive. Someone said the faces of the prince and queen turned pale. The man was interrupted and told to keep quiet if he didn't want trouble. Fei Lin said that the main character is appearing and the good show is about to start. People were talking about how this guy was very handsome, just like all the other princes. Someone said they wanted to be his girlfriend. And one girl had a brooch that had fallen off and was asking for someone to help her. The Empress asked what he was doing here. Qin Yun picked up the brooch. He gave it to the girl and said her brooch was beautiful. The girl made the mistake of starting to think that he wasn't talking about her things, but about her. Qin Yun replied that the Empress had wanted him to come here a year ago. And it would be boring if there weren't five Tianqin princes at the engagement banquet. Qin Zheng Feng replied that she couldn't let him take part in the wedding, because he wanted to ruin everything. Qin Yun asked if he looked like a person who wanted to mess things up. Zheng Feng replied that he was. The Empress tells him to calm the beast and sits down. If he wasn't allowed to enter in front of so many people, everyone would realize that there was hostility in the royal family. Fei Ling beckoned him to sit down with her. The man said the guy got a lot stronger. Maybe he was somehow involved in the events that happened recently. Palace Elder Zhou Chuan replied to Father Guo that they would talk after the engagement. Xiao Yanlong said looking carefully. Yuelan was mortified. Qin Yun noticed how beautiful she was today. But as long as that guy is beside her, he can't act yet. Qin Yun caught his teacher's attention. Xiao Yanlong thinks that this guy dared to come and tried to have fun with his fiance. Mu Rong praised today's food. He said that these noodles are tastier than Doshirak. All he knows how to do is eat. Besides Qin Yun and Qi Yu, there are the grandchildren of the Blue Spirit Palace, the grandchildren of the Northern Palace, the youngest son of the Eastern Palace, the eldest grandchildren of the Western Palace, and everyone is going to marry Yuelan today. Failing asked who the old woman was, after all. He had said that she would be the last competitor. Qin Yun said he didn't know. Phelan wonders how he's going to save her if he doesn't even think about it. An old man came out and said that as everyone knows, because of Qin Yun's unfortunate reputation, the abolition of the prince had a very bad effect on the Tianqi Empire. Princess Yuelan, who had been engaged to him since she was a child, had dishonored them and undermined the prestige of the empire. Today, he and Tian Xiao discussed it with Tian Qing. He decided to remarry Princess Yuelan to Prince Tian Qing again. They invited honorable guests to witness the engagement. He asked the princess to come up and complete the engagement ceremony. Ye Lan said that she and Qin Yun got engaged first, and the engagement contract had the bloody fingerprints of the emperors from the two countries. Everyone knows what it means. The blood mark is a sacred contract. If someone fails to fulfill their promise, it will remain in the history books. If it is written about it in the history books, it is really ugly. Xiao Yanlong asked his father, this can be taken seriously. He answered that he did. It seems that Emperor Tian Xiao is also at the mercy of others. Otherwise, Xiao Yanlong wouldn't have rashly denied it. There have long been rumors that Emperor Tian Xiao has suffered spiritual trauma and memory gaps, which is why he doesn't do what he says. As long as he doesn't come to the engagement with a contract, it doesn't mean anything. The engagement was made by the emperor and the former queen. The contract was in their hands, but they did not mention the affair or hand over the contract to them. 
Xiao Yanlong called her a kind sister and said that he knew she was very unhappy about Yue Mei's affairs, but she couldn't laugh at such an important event. Qin Yun stood up for her and said that he would show the contract if they wanted to see it. He did it right away. It is indeed the bloody sign of Emperors Tian Xiao and Tian Qin, which matches the signature of his temple. He was invited by Master Duan and has a certain status to perform. After this confirmation, those who want to marry Xiao will not dare to make trouble. He asked since there is proof the engagement is still on. Qin Zhengfeng thought that this was a bad thing. As long as the contract is burned, the contract is null and void. The guy's inner element is destroyed, and he has little spiritual strength. It's not enough to improve his situation. The old man asked, how about selling him the contract? If Elder Luo can buy the contract, their Tian Xiao Empire can also discuss Yue Lan marrying their grandson with them. If that happens, they won't agree less. Even if the guy marries Xiao Yue Lan, she won't be happy and he won't have the strength to control her. Qin Yun replied that he would not sell the contract. The old man offered 70 million crystal coins. It was a serious deal. Even for that kind of money, he won't sell it. Mu Rong said that Yue Lan and Yue Mei are willing to marry Qin Yun. Both Tian Xiao flowers fell into his hands. This is a priceless treasure. He wouldn't sell it even for a soul. The crowd said it would be wonderful to marry two such beauties. They want them too. The inner Yuan is destroyed, but no one cares. Qin Yun's two wives are talented martial artists. Yan Long told him to shut up, because at least he intended to get it today. Fei Ling said that the guy just gave her a spatial bracelet. It's a very expensive item, apparently he has a lot of crystal coins. She decided to help him out. Giving away free bracelets, that's really rich. The girls were envious of her. They had heard that Qin Yun was a master who could make artifacts. The old man offered 100 million crystal coins. The guy said they were for sale. He's raised the price further, now 150 million. The old man told him to make a deal with him, and he would have countless coins. He would be able to buy a lot of elixir, after which he could live on them for two or three hundred years. Besides, if he has money he can buy himself any hottie he wants. Qin Yun said that he was right, and surrendered. The old man promised that he would never regret this decision. If the guy gave the contract, he would give him the money immediately. Yue Lan shouted, she had understood him correctly. Yan Long said that whoever could buy the contract could marry Yue Lan. When Master was in the palace, she often heard Yue Lan talking about Qin Yun. And when she heard about the guy's death, she was very saddened. And now, she felt like the girl was angry with him. People started haggling and driving the price higher and higher. Even the Empress offered 250 million. While the others raised their prices, Qin Yun ate quietly. The old man offered 450 million. Qin Yun asked if anyone else wanted to raise the rate. He congratulated Elder Luo for successfully buying the contract. Now they must first give everything to Elder Chuo. He has 450 million coins on his crystal map. Qin Yun was handed a map, and the old man has a contract. Now that the contract has been bought, they can talk about Princess Yuolan's marriage. Qin Zhengfeng thought that this was repulsive. Obviously, she was going to marry someone else. Yuolan is clearly angry right now. Yuolan asked if he was satisfied since he had sold it and made so much money. Qin Yun replied that he sold the contract, not her. He told her not to worry, for the fun was about to begin. Qin Yun caught the attention of the others. As they all know, signing this contract is tantamount to signing two or three copies. As long as a copy of the contract exists, it will be valid. Thus, by the seal of the blood, two contracts were signed in the beginning, and they can only be terminated if they are all burned. In other words, Xiao Yulan is Qin Yun's wife. The old man asked what would happen to him now. Qin Yun used a piece of useless paper to earn 250 million. No wonder Elder Luo was about to collapse. He asked where the other contract is. If they don't show it, it can be assumed that the contract still exists. If the two of them can't produce a copy, the old man's prenup will be cancelled. Yan Long asked Yue Lan if she had ever seen another contract. She was silent. The old man said that his granddaughter, Princess Yue Lan, is very good. If someone marries her, he will be very happy and won't need to care about it in other aspects. Yan Long told Elder Luo that they would soon become a family. The old man replied that he had spent over 400 million crystal coins to acquire the contract. They have a solid foundation and the gift will never upset them. Qin Yun asked if they were making a contract too soon. He pulled out another contract for them. The old man thought it was impossible, since he had both contracts. Yan Long was telling Yue Lan to give him the treaty to burn. Yue Lan replied that she won't let it happen again. It's her marriage and her choice. He asked if she really wants to marry him. 
Not only did he start things with Yue Mei, but also with Qi Mei Lian, with Tian Qi. Because of the marriage arrangement with him, her reputation was criticized. But the girl supported him and didn't believe those words. Qin Yun was too good at this. The guy was related to many princesses. It's Qin Yun, so he has both bad and good qualities. Yan Long replied that she was only taking advantage of the guy. After this engagement, she would finally give up on him. He asked, did Qin Yun really think that she was going to marry him? He doesn't have a single bit of soul, only a martial spirit. There is absolutely no future out of this. He tried to be courteous to her so that she would give him the contract. He promised that the girl would live a wonderful life if she married him in the Western Palace. The girl said she would not marry him. Yan Long thought about what he should do, since Yue Mei had suddenly disappeared. Now the guy would see what he would say to her. He started to pressure Qin Yun again, saying that these two sisters were using him. If he signed the divorce letter and left Yue Lan free, he would give him 450 million crystal coins. Yue Lan said that he can't sign it or she will consider his actions as an insult to her. And those who insult her will die. Qin Yun replied that he had no objections. Xiao Yue Lan is an honest person. When she was young, she promised her mom to marry him. All promises must be kept. Unfortunately, some people will sell everything for their own gain. Qin Yun asked if she was asking for him to marry her. Ye Lan replied, If he doesn't agree, she will kill him. Qin Yun only wants the best for the person he likes. Since he promised to marry Xiao Yue Lan, there will be someone responsible for it. Someone was wondering what else to do here, and whether it was true that Wei Lan had gone blind, and someone was just hungry. Qin Yun replied that actually he didn't really get along with women. This was his obvious lie. Ye Lan said it doesn't matter. He just got along with 20 girls and she will marry him today. Inside the secret corridor. Now it was Qin Yun's day. Qin Yun said that not only did he have 20 girls, he also had a child. He's just starting to talk nonsense already. Yo Lan told him to stop because she doesn't believe him. The others yelled for her to punch him. They'll back her up. Yu Lan said that after she beats him, it's not over. Today, dead or alive, he must get married. Qin Yun tried to calm her down. If she did, there was no point in marrying him. Ye Lan said he was right, and she changed her mind. If he dared to write the divorce paper now, she wouldn't kill him immediately. But little Qin Yun would be the first person she would kill. Qin Yun replied that he just thought that marrying him would spoil her great future. Behind him, the girls behind him were shouting about why he wouldn't marry one of them. The second one said that she didn't mind being his puppet. The third one said that she was always willing to. Ye Lan replied that she didn't mind. He needs to decide now whether to dump her or marry her. He only has two options. She will cut off his tongue after one more proposal. Qin Yun said that just now, they wanted to give 450 million crystal coins for her. If she can pay him the same amount, he promises to marry her. Others said they had never seen such a brazen man before. Yulan had given him one last chance. Without permission, she would kill him immediately. If she killed him, she would kill herself. Qin Yun replied, Determined to marry Xiao Yue Lan and will never divorce her, Yan Long told him to think carefully. He doesn't deserve the girl at all, and he won't be able to hold her back if he marries her. He should understand this better than he does himself. Yue Lan called him shameless. All he thinks about is how to use someone. She used to be bullied by powerful princesses when she was young. Later, the emperor and queen invited young Qin Yun and his teacher to visit. It was then that he pushed away everyone who bullied her and was seriously injured as a result. Qin Yun didn't expect her to remember this. Because he saved her then, she had respected and admired him since she was a child. Later, she relied on his teacher to help improve her physique. She was able to practice martial arts normally. Others began to be convinced that the guy was a good person. Qin Zhengfeng thought that they have been engaged for a long time. They are the most suitable couple. But now she says that she has deep feelings for Qin Yun. Furthermore, the image of the burial fairy was obtained by her mother and has nothing to do with the Tianxiao royal family. Yanlong told her not to blame Father Huang for not recognizing her. She should know that with her father's strength, it wouldn't be difficult at all to completely destroy her and Qin Yun. Wu Feng thought that if Tianran Emperor Ron Chen died here, the consequences would be unthinkable. And now Qin Yun has completely insulted the Western Palace, the Queen and the Emperor. Yue Lan reminded him of what he said about the guy not deserving her. But the other people here don't deserve her either, because they can't even fight her. Qi Yu thought that this is really serious. He is the Prince of Tian Qi and is at the 8th level at the age of 20, and Yue Lan has recently advanced to the 8th level. 
Qi Yu offered her to marry him if he could defeat Yue Lan. Qin Yun said that it was too shameful to fight with a girl. She said that you only want to marry him, so he won't let her marry anyone else. Qi Yu replied that this is exactly what he wants. He will kill the guy and then marry Yue Lan. Yan Long shouted for Qin Yun not to mess with him, after all his opponent was Yue Lan. Qin Yun said that he was a 7th level martial artist. Fighting against him won't be a problem. Besides, Yue Lan is his wife. No one would dare to come and take his wife away. After saying that, the girl blushed. Since he wants to get Xiao Yue Lan so badly, he would have to go through Qin Yun first. Ye Lan said that he was wearing gold armor. This gold armor is extraordinary. Wu Feng has no martial soul. Only two meridians, but he has a sacred sword. Using the dynasty sword, his strength is comparable to level 9. Because of his spirit, they look down on him. But it's all because they don't know much about him. Si Yu said that if he couldn't hit him, then he wasn't worthy of marrying Yue Lan. He also reminded that mascots and puppets should not be used. Qi Yu was the third prince of Tianqi and one of the best in his generation. The others wondered how Qin Yun would be able to defeat him. His opponent was better than him in every aspect. Qin Yun was only at the eighth step, so there was no way he could win. It was Tianqi's emperor, Qi Minghai. Qi Yu is very curious about what martial arts Qin Yun is a master in, after all. Both Yue Lan and Yue Mei are interested in this. The others have heard that she is not bad looking. They wouldn't be surprised if she's now going out on the town and moonlighting as a girl of easy virtue. Yue Mei has been humiliated since she was a little girl, but she still loves people. Such a good girl suffers because of people like him over and over again. Ye Lan shouted for Qin Yun to teach him how to be a man. They began. Si Yu shouted that he would kill him in three moves, but Qin Yun was enveloped in energy. His soul burst out. Qi Yu is badly injured. Qi Yu was punched in the face. That punch to him was for Yue Mei. Qi Minghai couldn't believe his eyes. A further blow was struck for her mother. Qi Minghai descended into the arena. He asked Elder Chuo what kind of magic technique he used. He asked him to quickly remove the barrier. The Elder replied that the fight was unfinished and he wouldn't remove the barrier until it was over. Qi Minghai was telling Qin Yun to stop. Yang Shu Yu was satisfied with her disciple. Qin Yun asked if he would still humiliate Yue Mei. Qi Yu replied that he wouldn't, and he gave up. The barrier has finally been removed. Sayo told his father that his two martial souls had disappeared, and his strength was gone. Qi Minghai looked at Qin Yun with anger. He started threatening to kill the guy for the stunt. The man said that the guy combined spiritual and mental power, after which he attacked the soul. Qi Yu only used spiritual power to strengthen the physical attack. Murong added that the funny thing was that he couldn't help but talk about his two fighting souls. Qi Minghai said that he remembered Mu Rong and called him a smurf. Yan Long asked Qin Zhengfeng if he will fight him. Mu Rong replied that he didn't want to become a beaten dog like Qi Yu. He had done so many terrible things before becoming a prince. Zheng Feng replied that he would not lose and show him that he was the prince of Tianqin. He will destroy him and continue with the wedding. Qin Zhengfeng said that Qin Yun was not worthy of Yue Lan. Qin Yun asked Yue Lan if it was okay for him to deal with him. Yue Lan said that this fight was good. But she knows that the guy didn't use all his power. Qin Zhengfeng will make him pay for everything. Qin Yun is at the seventh level, and he is at the eighth level. But Zhengfeng isn't tough, so he can use his best weapon. Zhengfeng used the blue wind sword. It is the best magic weapon. Qin Yun uses his hammer. The Empress said that Zhengfeng should kill him this time. He replied that he knew everything. Now they can get started. First, Qin Yun must become defensive and understand the limits of his strength. Zhengfeng threw a punch. But Qin Yun repelled his attack. The other girls were on Qin Yun's side and supported him. A dome appeared around Qin Yun. This caused Qin Shengfeng to recoil. He brought back the sword he had withdrawn with his power. In addition to the blue wind sword, a dozen more swords suddenly appeared here. There is an extra space inside the blue wind sword. It hides several swords that can be released at any time. Mu Rong had noticed that this guy's sword really wasn't that simple, so it wouldn't be easy to handle it. Qin Yun had no inner Yuan and was able to continue cultivating until now. It was because of the support of spiritual power. He only needs to defend himself and not get hurt. He will combine the Sword of Qi with the Sword of Thunder. Xin Zheng Feng will let him taste the flavor of the Golden Electric Snake. It was the aura of a Thunder Sword. That aura enveloped the guy. The guy's body was struck by lightning. Zheng Feng laughed and asked if he liked it. That was just the beginning. He attacked him again. It was the attack that reached the guy. After which, Qin Yun was flung straight towards the barrier. He coughed up blood. The girls revolted against Zheng Feng because their favorite was being beaten up. But the guy still hasn't fallen. But Qin Yun stopped this attack. No one could believe that his hammer could stand up to thunder and lightning. 
And then, there's this absorption. But the giant spirit king's hammer doesn't have that ability. The guy added it himself. Qin Zhengfeng wants to attack him again. But Qin Yun dodged his attacks as best he could. But it was painful. It's time for them to end this game. Yilan told him to be careful. Qin Zhengfeng had already said goodbye to him and told the guy to memorize his last move. Qin Yun must watch as he breaks his king hammer. Qin Yun would not allow him to do so. There was such a bright light that others just couldn't open their eyes. The building began to shake. Qin Yun's clothes were torn. It was the Yi family's thunder sword technique. It was simply impossible. Prefecture level martial arts are not easy to perform without a sacred body. Prefecture level martial arts are more unique than the mystery level. Qin Zhengfeng said that the guy should realize how weak he is. He will give him another chance to faithfully write a divorce letter. Wu Feng contacted Qin Yun and said that the situation was not good. He should surrender first. Yang Shiyue shouted for his disciple not to be beaten. He would die if Zheng Feng continued like this. Qin Yun replied that none of his martial arts were unique to the Tian Qin imperial family. Apparently, his mother and son had not caught the attention of Emperor Qin Yun's father. Qin Zhengfeng said that the Tianqi royal family's martial arts were just a device for the weak. Today, he would show him how strong the Yi family's martial arts were. He wanted to strike him again, and the man began to worry about Qin Yun. Tears appeared in Yue Mei's eyes. Even Qin Yun himself recognized that it was over. But suddenly his mark was awakened. The guy didn't realize what was going on, but it will definitely help him. Zheng Feng's hand began to tremble. He jumped away from the guy. Sheng Feng doesn't hear anything. A sound echoes inside him, causing his inner strength to be unable to condense. Amidst the smoke stood the guy as if nothing had happened. Unexpectedly, she could now understand Tian Xiao Xiaotian's sound. The girls were screaming about how beautiful he was, and about their love. Qin Yun changed. Zheng Feng didn't realize what was happening. Such a sight made him go pale. Qin Yun's hand was surrounded by some sort of ball. Qin Yun let him try the lion claw he had just studied. These large attacks were going straight at Qin Zhengfeng. Qin Yun told him not to hide and show himself if he was a man. He should take his punch and prove his strength to Yue Lan. But Zhengfeng somehow blocked his attack. But of course, Qin Yun didn't stop. For Qin Zhengfeng, this was not a good thing. It was too powerful a force for him. If he gets hit by it, he's finished. There was no need for Zheng Feng to face him while he was attacking. Only in between attacks would he be able to put him down in one fell swoop. But Qin Yun multigenically turned around and rushed to attack him. Qin Yun attacked, but Zheng Feng dodged as best he could. Qin Yun immediately continued to attack without respite. Zheng Feng was almost at his limit. The power of his attacks are getting stronger and stronger. But fortunately for Qin Zheng Feng, the guy didn't seem to have any more strength. This was a great chance for him to finally get the guy over. But it was as if Qin Yun had been waiting for this. A fiery aura reappeared around him. With his technique, he was able to push Qin Zheng Feng away. Yelin asked what the other trick was. Qin Yun's next attack would send the prince into retirement. He punched Zheng Feng in the stomach. He started coughing up blood. He got his soul with his technique. The referee has started the countdown. And in this competition, Qin Yun won. The empress immediately ran up to her son. She noticed that his fighting spirit was gone and his inner Yuan was dissipating. She looked at Qin Yun with fury. She shouted that he would die right here. The Empress ordered Gong Yan to stop him from leaving. They were definitely not playing by the rules. He summoned his lion spirit. Qin Yun shouted to the old man to attack first. Their techniques came into contact. Even the barrier couldn't withstand that energy. Gong Yan also started coughing up blood after this technique. Qin Yun wanted to throw out another trick that he had just learned. There was an explosion that blew a hole in the roof of the building. Qin Zhengfeng stood leaning on his sword while the Empress sat on the floor. This attack was clearly unnecessary for Qin Yun's body. Wu Feng and another man approached him. One asked if the guy was okay, and the other said that he was too fierce, causing him to destroy his Yuan. Gong Yan was also told to stop and not to do it again. Mu Rong wanted to help Qin Yun and retrieve his hammer, but it was too heavy for him. The Empress cried out that Qin Yun had destroyed the Prince's fighting spirit and inner Yuan. Fan Zhengfeng told her that he had had enough. It's all over. The Empress asked the guy how he could be so strong without Yuan, especially since he dares to claim that he hasn't practiced magic. Someone noticed that a lion totem appeared on his arm. The other one said it was impossible. It was the legacy of the ancient Tian. He wondered how the guy was able to get it. It is said that those who have been dipped in the Tian pool can gain this ability if they are chosen by the totem. No wonder its combat abilities are so dangerous since they are all inherited from the lion totem. It is an incredibly powerful ability. 
Qin Zheng Feng thought why good things kept happening to him while he had to be submissive and watch Qin Yun take everything away from him, but he still has an ace up his sleeve. He said that he still has Qin Yun's mother's bones. If he wants to get them back, he will have to divorce Xiao Yue Lan. The Empress laughed and said her bones would be better given to the dogs. If the guy doesn't want that to happen, then he should do what the prince said. Yue Lan has noticed that the princes of the three empires are all the same. They threaten him with his dead mother's body. Qin Yun should also give him the 450 million crystal coins he had just received. They could be considered as compensation for the moral damage he had suffered. Finally, Qin Yun had lost to him. The prince would be the winner of this game. Qin Yun was approached by Yue Lan. She told the guy to write the divorce papers. Even if there is no prenup, she will still only be his wife. Her statement didn't even surprise the guy. It was like he already knew it. He wiped the blood from his lips, after which he touched her head. Qin Yun said that she was his and would always be only his. Yulan looked at him with loving eyes. Qin Jing Feng told him to stop talking nonsense and end the divorce. After all, there was still a banquet in his honor today. Even if the guy is the heir to the lion totem, there's still nothing he can do. But then suddenly something appeared. This attack pierced through Qin Zheng Feng, after which she nailed the guy to a pillar. King Qin King, who was Qin Long's brother and was in alliance with the Ye family, recognized the Dragon King's spear. It was Tian Qin's inheritance. It was Qin Long. Others were surprised that he still wasn't dead and had martial arts skills. Qin Yun asked if Wu Feng liked his father's appearance. Qin Long said that the Empress didn't count on him being able to return alive today. She used him, and after teaming up with the traitors Xiao Yun and Tai Shi, she did everything to kill him. And then there was that old dog Ye Chang Chao, who also wanted to usurp the status of the Qin family. He blew his head off his shoulders. The Empress did not understand how this could have happened. The Empress pointed out that Qin Zheng Feng was also his son. Does his own father really want to kill him? But it didn't work on the Emperor. He did kill his son. Others began to discuss what had happened in front of so many people. The Empress wept and screamed that he had killed his own blood and flesh. She could not believe that her son had been murdered before her very eyes. Qin Long replied that he knows everything. Qin Zhengfeng and Qin Feng are both children of the Ye family who were forced to pose as his sons. His biological sons are Qin Yun and Qin Tianyi. The Ye family really had a good plan. If Qin Zhengfeng successfully ascended the throne, the Qin Empire would belong to the Ye family on the same day. Qin Long told the demon king of the city that he and his Meng family were responsible for taking all the party members captive. He will slowly get rid of them. The demon king of the city ordered the rebels such as Yan Gogong to be destroyed. Qin Long wanted to finally get rid of them. Qin Long blocked his path and told him that he wouldn't escape so easily. He was too strong now, and he has the dragon king's spear, which would make it even harder. Yan Long said that the focus today is on Yue Lan's marriage. She just said that whoever can defeat her will have the right to marry her. In the Blue Spirit Palace, there are still a few young disciples waiting to challenge her. Qin Long said that Qin Yun could no longer compete and invited Princess Yue Lan to fight in person. One guy said they won't use weapons, but will fight with their bare hands. He wants the girl to see that he is worthy of her. This guy's name was Luo Yanwu. He has a six yang spirit vein, and he's also about to come to the ninth level. But the old man said that his family was much better than Qin Yun's. Qin Long called him an old jerk. Luo Yanwu wanted to attack her with his stones. Xiao Yulin didn't lag behind, and an orb appeared in her hands. She used her shield to shield herself from his like that. His martial arts are at a perfect level, even though the kid has only learned the basics. He's mastered them quite well. Luo Yanwu assured her that she would be defeated by him. If the girl was seriously injured, it would be easier for him to obtain the immortal fairy painting. But Xiao Yue Lan remained unharmed. She used her technique. This attack stunned the guy. It seemed like a frivolous attack, but she was able to cut off the guy's arm. The old man couldn't believe his eyes. Yue Lan replied to keep dreaming that he could marry her. The guy yelled that he was admitting he lost. The old man moved toward her, clearly angry. But in her defense, a man stepped up and told Lao Luo to heal his grandson first. The girl dared to start so ruthlessly. It practically destroyed the child's fighting spirit. If he hadn't stabilized this injury in time, the child would have been in trouble. Yulan replied that he wanted to cripple her. What's the point of this competition if she can't fight back? This guy has no ability, but he wants to keep going. The old man started cursing her and told her to shut up. The man said his grandson is really much worse than the girl, and she is not ruthless, otherwise his grandson would have died. In a year or two, she would be able to enter the Martial Dao stage. Qin Yun wondered if she would kill him in the future. Yan Long realized that the others were not willing to challenge Yue Lan now. Another man came out and said that the matter of Qin Yun and Yue Lan's wedding was settled. 
Now they needed to talk about other things. It was Tian Shenwu's vice president, Guo Cheng. Qin Yun was in the abandoned lands. Although it was an accident, he was still very lucky to obtain the Berserk Soul technique. The Berserk Soul had practically destroyed their Tianqi Empire. Today, with the Blue Spirit Palace's martial arts leaders here, they must resolve this matter. Qin Long shouted that no one could doubt his Qin Yun without proof. The Northern Palace Elder asked if the guy wanted to go train in their Northern Palace. He could offer very generous terms. But he was interrupted by an elder of the Southern Palace. She said that her Southern Palace would have much better conditions than the Northern Palace. The old man shouted that possessing this totem didn't mean he was alive. When inheriting a totem, the most important thing is to look at the totem soul in it. If there is no totem soul in it, then it is a dead totem, which will greatly affect the bearer in the future. A dead totem will not only absorb the power of his soul, but will also make it difficult for his soul to ascend. If it is a dead totem, it must immediately break its arm, or it may become a soulless madman. He was offered a stone to test his soul. The guy has the energy to release the totem to the surface. If there is a soul in the totem, the stone will shine. But there was no reaction there. The old man laughed, for it was indeed a dead totem. First, the guy needs to be cured in Chen Xuanyuan. In order to enter the Northern Palace, he must pass the certification. Eastern Shui Yuhui Blue Spirit Palace. Shui Yuhui said that although the Eastern Palace couldn't offer any good conditions, but it was at least not as arrogant as some people. If he wanted to come, he would always be welcome. Qin Yun met that he heard that he had an unusual gate of the Eastern Palace. The guy asked if he could go in and try it out. Others think he's looking for death. The unusual gate is hell. Whoever enters is a dead man. It's been years since anyone's been certified. But if the guy passes the certification, he could become the sole heir to the unusual gate. It can be said to be the same status as the Lord of the Fourth Palace. Yelan told him not to make a commotion after all. She doesn't want to be a widow. He will obediently follow her to the Eastern Palace. Anyway, even if she doesn't go to the door with the mysterious pattern, she can tell the secret of the fairy hidden in it. If two people later find the burial site of the immortal bones, and if the strength wasn't enough, he could go with them. The elders wondered how they could have forgotten about this. They knew it so well that they had to insist on capturing Qin Yun. Qin Yun said that he planned to stay at Qian Xuanyuan first. Xie Wufeng said that Mr. Du Gui was there and would be able to teach him the basics of spiritual martial arts. Ye Lan grumbled that he was going to leave his newlywed wife and practice at another school. The guy asked what was wrong. Ye Lan replied that then he would solve the problem with the totem. Otherwise, it would have a great impact on his soul in martial arts. Qin Yun thanked her for caring for him so much. In that case, he would take her to a place tomorrow. Next day, Qin Yun has been dressed up. Ye Lan said that it was great that he had finally regained his prince status. He wanted to celebrate with his brother Xiao Lan, but he was suddenly gone. Ye Lan led the way and asked him where he wanted to take her. The guy replied that the girl would find out a little later. Ye Lan got excited, for she thought he would arrange a date, but her hopes were not realized. Ye Lan asked why he brought her to the well in the garden of the Imperial Palace. Qin Yun replied that there was a switch on the wall of the well. After pressing it, one could enter the secret room. He jumped down. Qin Yun said that Yue Mei was fine and had been saved. True, she was in the tower and it took him a long time to find her. It's quite a long story. Yue Lan said that she couldn't imagine that her aunt was almost killed. Her father as well as the emperor is under the control of Xiao Yan Long and Queen Ye. Fortunately, he killed that poisonous woman earlier. Otherwise the situation would have been more alarming. But here we have asked what his relationship with Yue Mei is and how many women he's been with. She also asked if Yang Shiyue had anything to do with him. Qin Yun replied that Master Yang had helped him when he was out, so he liked her a lot but not in that way. He also said that Master Yang and Xiao Yanlong have a marriage contract. The boy asked why his master was being threatened by Xiao Yanlong. Ye Lan replied, I don't know. Anyway, he can kill Xiao Yanlong but Master Yang is his concern, so he is obliged to work hard. Qin Yun said that he was just a little brother in Teacher Yang's eyes, but if Xiao Yanlong is really forcing her, then he must save his teacher. Qin Yun doesn't want to anger Xiao Yue Lan, but teacher Yang has helped him a lot. Yue Lan replied that she understood everything. They won't get married so soon, so they can use this time to build up their strength as soon as possible. It even embarrassed the guy, but he still had something he wanted to show her. This is the image of the immortal fairy that his mom got. When Yue Lan's mom gave her this picture, she said that there were three more of them. The girl didn't expect one of them to be the guys, Qin Yun said that there was another one at Xiaomei Lian's place. He asked Grandpa Duan to return it to her. 
He blames himself for Malian having to see her mother's bones shattered. Yulan comforted him and said that he had destroyed Chi Yu so she would be happy. Qin Yun thanked her for these words and touched her hand. This made Yulan a little embarrassed. They turned away from each other in embarrassment. And the guy said he thought the last image was in Tai Shi's sister's hands. Also, his, her, and Mei Lian's mom went to the three imperial harems. They all died to obtain the immortal card. Ye Lan knows this, but she still felt sad. Qin Yun showed the key and said that it was from the emperor's tomb. He received it together with Master Si. Ye Lan said that there might be a lot of treasures hidden there. The girl asked if they would go to see them together later. The boy said yes. Qin Yun said that Xiao Yanlong was so heartless that he even sold the grave of his own ancestors. Speaking of Qin Zhengfeng and the conditions they had set, Yue Lan replied that Yanlong was willing to give two crystal mines in the Tianqin Empire. This way, he would be able to get enough crystal coins for cultivation. It turns out that Qin Zhengfeng came up with the idea of the immortal bone stash, and the image of a burial fairy followed. They also wanted to get Qin Yun's spirit. He has no idea how come his own martial arts soul is only gold level and very weak. Ye Lan asked if he had really mastered the art of soul purification. Qin Yun replied that when he competed yesterday he quickly destroyed his spirit while Qin Zhengfeng was stunned. Ye Lan said it was too risky. It's dangerous if it's exposed. Qin Yun said that his secrets are only known to the elder in the Eastern Palace. No one else knows that he has a funeral fairy, let alone that he has the soul of a purple dragon. He is very good at hiding and is used to being close to Master Du. This master is a powerful warrior. Now they have to leave, for they are quite finished. Tian Qin Hall, Qin Long said, deciding to leave everything in the palace to the city demon king. Fei Ling congratulated him, for he was finally a prince and could still marry such a good woman. Ye Lan said that she heard that she and Ji Wu Feng are both in Qin Xuan Yuan. In the future, she should pay close attention to Qin Yun and not let him go around. Fei Ling replied definitely. Brother Shui saved Qin Yun by having them return to the Eastern Palace with Yue Lan. The Temple of Inscriptions. Qin Yun walked into the room where Yue Mei and Elder Duan were. He walked up to the girl and told her sister was fine. Yue Mei replied that she understood that. They were just talking about it. She asked how a guy could be injured so seriously. Qin Yun replied that everything was fine. He had gotten better overnight. When he was all set, he would take her to Aunt Xiao. Yue Mei said that he will be her brother-in-law in the future. So she will treat him like a brother. He is much better than Xiao Yanlong. Qin Yun revealed the spirit of Qin Sheng Feng's golden thunder sword. She can use the mirror to copy it. Tomorrow, he and her will enter the palace again, for many martial souls are waiting for their choice. Yue Mei clearly liked the idea very much. She successfully copied the spirit. Tian Qin Hall. They came to Qin Long's house. Yue Mei greeted him and he called her little Yue Mei. Yue Mei asked if her father the emperor could still be saved. After all, he must have seen him that day. Qin Long replied that he is now a puppet. He doesn't know what tricks Xiao Yanlong and his mother used on him. Yue Mei replied that Xiao Yanlong had not taken any precautions. Qin Long suggested that Qin Yun deal with the rebels. The guards in the dungeon were all chosen by the emperor. The boy agreed to do so. In the dungeon, the empress saw Xiao Yue Mei and asked why she was still not dead. Yue Mei said that this damned Queen Ye is as annoying as their emperor Tian Xiao kingdom. It was her turn to die. Qin Yun said that he had been waiting for this for a long time. The guy used his soul extraction technique on her again. She too had a golden thunder soul. The man said the old minister knew it was wrong. And the old minister should not have to draw on the spirit of his royal highness. He asked to be detained for life. But Qin Long simply ignored him. Qin Yun took his soul. The former empress cried out that the Ye family had come to an end. Qin Long said that he had hurt them so much at first, but he didn't kill him with Lin Chi. He showed kindness to him. Yemi said that this was the golden wind martial arts soul she had always wanted, and finally held it in her hands. The man said that Qin Yun was a soul-devouring demon. Qin Yun said that there was still a need to see who the real demon here actually was. Now he got to taste the pain the guy himself had endured. Yue Mei showed him the poisonous needles that were sent to her by Qin Zheng Feng. It is said that Queen Ye gave them to him, but Queen Yi was stunned for some reason. Qin Long said that they didn't live long, and this was bad news. If not for Father Emperor's departure from the secret road, he might have been tortured by this woman and that poisonous needle. Qin Long said that now that the affairs of the palace were resolved, he would continue to cultivate with peace of mind. Qin Yun asked if there was something important going on lately. Qin Long replied that the city demon king had heard the news that a large group of evil beasts and ghosts would cross the border. By then, all three empires as well as other small states would be filled with them. 
the emperor approved the use of all the crystal treasury coins to protect the 10 big cities and 50 small and medium-sized cities of the Tianqin Empire. Once a large number of evil beasts invaded, the walls would become very dangerous. Qin Yun and Yue Mei asked when this herd would come. Qin Long doesn't know for sure, for the city's demon kings said that the beasts have only crossed the river, but it should be soon. The other cities strengthened their defenses overnight. Qin Yun replied that he should go to the Yunlong Mountains since Aunt Xiao was still there. Qin Long said that it would take three days to return, and he would go with him. That way, his son would be safer. The emperor wondered, doesn't his boy know what kind of relationship he has with his aunt? Yunlong Mountains. Qin Long said that there were no traces of evil beasts nearby. They went down to the cave, and the boy asked if the aunt had been here. Xiao Xin Qin walked out towards them. She finally saw Yue Mei. Auntie was glad that she was all right. She was so worried that Qin Yun wouldn't be able to save her. Yue Mei said that she really missed her auntie too. Qin Long cried and said that his son had done a good deed. Qin Yun said that auntie could practice in the tower and Yue Mei would be her companion. The boy will visit them often. The aunt thanked the guy for really saving them. Qin Long said that his dragon totem was obtained from the Dragon King's spear. Qin Yun replied that unfortunately his totem was dead. Qin Long said that his son's totem is unusual. It has no life or death. He had been with the dragon totem for several years, but he had never been able to understand its martial arts. The world under the nine suns is colorful and full of mystery. The martial arts they humans know are only a small part of that world. Qin Yun replied that the Blue Star Palace plays a small role in Wu Huang. Therefore, what they say might not be correct. The vast and ancient Wu Huang, Zongmen Wugo. There are countries there, all of which are said to belong to the Wu state, and the lords are powerful Wu kings. The power of a war nation is very frightening. Yuimai told Qin Yun that his barbecue is so flavorful. He is an excellent cook. Xiao Sunqin said, His father's point is correct. There is no King Wu, only the spirit of the strong Wu Huang city. Some sects don't want to expand, so they maintain their status and their activities. Even a huge military kingdom is afraid of the three ancient gates of a king-level sect. Qin Long said that by working hard, one day they would be able to go to Wu Huang. The place he was in was too beautiful. Jin Yun had heard that this place had been prepared for him, and he would be able to enter with the sign Yue Lan had given him. A man came out and said the guy was finally here. They'd been waiting a long time for him. Master Du asked if he was tired. He will take the boy to a special room. The man also said that Chi Mei Lian had come to practice with them. They can see each other tomorrow morning. The guy walked into the room where the girl was sitting. She saw the way he had become in the time they hadn't seen each other. Shi Mei Lian immediately hugged him and said that he had grown so much. She asked me not to call her sister this time. The girl was happy that Brother Yun was still alive, and also that he had beaten Qi Yu so fiercely. But then Master Du walked in and said that something was coming. Qin Yun asked, a horde of evil beasts was coming. He replied that they were moving faster than they had anticipated. Master Du doesn't know if the major cities have taken precautions. Fortunately, Lake Wangxing can play a defensive role. Xin Yun said that this lake was deep and bottomless, and it was also cold. It won't be easy for the evil monsters, but the flying monsters are more annoying. But it can be dangerous if hundreds of millions of miracles come together. Master Du replied that if the herd came, they would have to send their disciples to deal with the evil beasts. Qin Yun had better prepare himself as well. Qin Yun must quickly learn how to draw peculiar patterns within the soul, and create a strong soul for his arm totem. The first thing to do is to release that low-level silver fire martial spirit. To engrave the spirit seal on the soul, the key is to allow the spirit pattern to rebirth the soul while engraving. He has not done this for a long time and therefore the spiritual patterns carved are not attached to the soul. The soul, like air, couldn't be engraved directly when it wasn't like a symbolic purifier. It was quite difficult. But it seems to him that his mysterious spirit has the power of regeneration. Perhaps he can separate it from his spirit if he takes the martial spirit as a basis, and then resort to the soul blood power to break down the spirit structure. He wasn't sure if it would be painful to extract it with a soul cleansing technique, but as it turned out, it didn't hurt at all. The regenerative power of black martial spirit is very strong, and it can also add divided martial spirit. He needs to inject the power of the soul blood into this fighting spirit. The guy tried to do everything carefully so as not to damage the spirit. He applied pattern after pattern, after one day and one night, he was finally able to fuse the spirit of fire, encapsulated in the image of a ghost spirit, into a sword. He needs more spirit samples? <laughs> this magic sword is the best spirit weapon against ghosts and monsters! <laughs> he finally got it all done. 
However, the spirit cannot be exposed for a while and covered by physical strength and the totem. To strengthen the totem on the hand, it is best to introduce Ye Chang Chao Jin Lei Wu's spirit into it. The totem itself is an attribute of fire. Accordingly, it should also be engraved with a fire pattern. And Jin's thunder spirit is an attribute of fire and can be successfully integrated into it. The guy will bring his thoughts to fruition. After using it for a few days, it was finally highlighted in spirit. He needs to start the fusion of totem and spirit. Qin Yun hopes that everything will go smoothly this time. He closed his eyes. But something kept bothering him and he opened them, seeing Master Du's face in front of him. Qin Yun was frightened, for he thought that there was a ghost here. He first called Master Du a ghost, which clearly made him angry. But then he stopped doing so. Master Du said not to let it happen again. Qin Yun said that every disciple of the academy was training intensely. He actively responded to this call as well. Master Du replied that everyone is very anxious right now because once the herd enters the human world, it will cause great destruction. Qi Mei Lian wants to go back to training. The mineral resources of the leading empires and forces must also be protected in time. Once the herd invades, the strongest monsters will definitely decide to get rid of the crystal mine. But suddenly they heard someone scream, which alarmed them. They immediately ran out to see what was going on. It was a two-headed vulture that looked like a huge chicken. The man said that Du Gui was just in time to attack this monster with him. Several people started attacking him at the same time. A few feathers sprinkled from this vulture. Qin Yun swept his eyes over the fact that this monster was strong. Under the attack of so many martial artists, it had only lost a few feathers. And the appearance of the two-headed vulture meant that the herd in the mountains was already approaching. The elders came down to him. Du Gui said that the roots of the big tree in the treasure forest are deep. They need to make a hole in the student bedroom that will lead to the root of the tree. It will be safer there. The vultures fly in groups, and they think more two-headed vultures will appear. So they need to cast a spell to prevent the flying monsters from attacking from the air. Qin Yun replied that he understood everything. A few days have passed, and he doesn't know what happened to Tianqin Imperial City. The entire empire rests on the Yunlong Mountains. If the herd attacked, the city near the mountain would soon be surrounded. But then the guy got called out. They were his friends. Wu Feng said that they were here to say goodbye to him. Qin Yun asked, didn't they pass Xing Xuan Yuan's test? Mu Rong asked how this could stop them. They are ready to go to the Blue Star Palace. Their teachers have been transferred to the Blue Star Palace, so they are just following them. The Blue Star Palace is eager to improve their strength. So they have relaxed the conditions and invited excellent teachers and disciples from the three major Zhuan martial arts schools. It's not a place he can just go. He's not going to the fourth house, he's going to a stronger place. The fourth house of the Blue Star has a Blue Holy Palace, the main house. The Holy Palace also has a Beast Martial Arts Palace. His second teacher, Murong, took them for martial arts training. Wu Feng would enter the Blue Saint Palace with his teacher and become a Blue Spirit Saint. When Qin Yun's practice was over, he would be able to meet them there. Du Gong said that the herd arrived faster than they expected. They crossed the Yunlong River and swept down all the mountains as well as the forests. The teacher asked how the guy's training was going lately. Qin Yun replied that he currently has 450 million crystal coins in his hand. He wants to buy something that will help him cultivate. The guy asked what he should buy. Dugong told him to buy Vajra pellets from the mystery store and refine them into potions. This would help his cultivation. He had just reached the seventh stage of martial arts golden bones. The later ones can use the diamond marrow inside the golden bones to curb the spirit of martial arts. Just like the Vajra, it is an eight-stage martial arts refinement. The most expensive items in Shen Yuan's store require arriving in advance before they can be purchased for crystal coins. He would need 200 million Shen Yuan points to purchase the diamond spirit. They will then take 100 million of them, along with 10 million crystal coins before he can exchange them. Qin Yun said not to tell him nonsense after all. There weren't many people with so many mysterious points in Xing Xuan Yuan, but these pellets are needed by the students of Xing Xuan Academy. When the herd arrives, maybe the academy will arrange to kill the evil beasts and get a lot of mystery points. But they heard something. It caught their attention. Attacks were flying in their direction. It was something above the clouds. It looked like the breath of ice and water spirits. The spell is already in progress. There was an unknown creature. The creature was trying to break through the barrier. The sinister beast flew straight at the old man but he fought it off with his weapon. Dugong and Qin Yun were clearly a bit shocked. The beast flew away. Qin Yun noticed that this senior was simply amazing. This was their dean. The dean has summoned all the teachers, so Dugong will go along. If Qin Yun gets bored, 
the man advised him to go shopping at the center. The area in the center of Xingxuanyuan Temple was not affected in any way. Someone mentioned that the large ice cubes were shattered. They could be had with syrup and juice for dessert. After the student dormitory was destroyed, the students had to live in a hotel. He entered Xingxuan College. Xin Yun heard that it contains all the classics of the world. The best place to learn the spirit is here. Everything related to spirit is on the third floor. He picked up the scroll. It turns out that his mysterious martial spirit can unleash mysterious dark inner powers. One can quickly disperse and absorb energy. Dark forces can also hide in the dark. In addition, they can release powerful underground fire that can melt everything. He put the scroll back down. Qin Yun read a hundred Wuhan knowledge books. He was so tired. His teacher Du should be somewhere nearby. It's night. Teacher Du slapped him and asked where he was. Wasn't it with a student? Qin Yun immediately replied that he wasn't. He gave the guy a crystal card that he could already use when it had his blood on it. The monster hunt is about to begin. He can find a hunting partner in exchange for the mysterious glasses. The only person Qin Yun knows is Fei Ling, Xing Yu Tower. He stood in front of the door to the girl's room and said it was him. Fei Ling replied that she heard that the guy had been actively cultivating for the past few days, but finally came to her. She invited him to come inside. Qin Yun noticed that although his sister lived in such a small place, it was very refined. Fei Ling said that it couldn't be, that her tree cave wasn't destroyed. The girl asked why he was so nervous. She has clothes underneath her bottoms. She knows that Su Wufeng will come to her to team up, so she has chosen their teammates beforehand. They are all martial arts couples, older brothers and sons who are the children of their family. When their foursome meets, they go to Xuan Dian's store. They approach the store. The man was happy to meet Qin Yun. He said to call him Brother Li. Qin Yun replied that they were people that Sister Fei Ling trusted. He gave them two bags of animal skins. Brother Li thanked the guy for the bags, for it was just what was needed. Now they need to go to Xuan Dian's store. They entered Xuan Dian's store. There's even 1 billion Xuan points and 100 million crystal coins to sell to Xuan Dan. Brother Li said that there are also vault artifacts for sale, but they require 500 million Xuan points and 5 million crystal coins. Fortunately, they have a vault artifact from Qin Yun. Fei Ling said that the guy can only do tasks that will help students with spirit completion if he needs Xuan Dian. He must earn a large amount of gold to support the work of this martial arts courtyard. The new vice president of their military academy was here. I'm sure he's here to announce something important. The vice president tapped his stick. He said that according to the discussion at the meeting, they, Xing Xuan Yuan, had decided to buy a large number of magic crystal cores to research the martial craft. Someone said that a seventh order battle craft could be exchanged for 100,000 mystery points, an eighth order magic crystal core for 1 million, and a ninth order magic core for 5 million. Brother Li said that the level of Spirit of Wonders, four martial crafts equal to martial arts, the magic crystal core of this spirit of martial craft could be exchanged for 5 million Xuan points, and any crystal egg of martial craft could be exchanged for the same amount of points. They need to go to Wangxing Lake right now. Night has fallen. Brother Li said that the invading beasts are not particularly big, of which the biggest is only the elephant. Monsters such as two-headed vultures and lizard dragons are spirit creatures. They belong to one ringleader who is not easy to face. Fei Ling added that most of the monsters had low intelligence, but they were cohesive and obeyed the commands of the leader. If they met, the guys would only have to hide. Brother suggested looking at those footprints first. Qin Yun said that they were far away from Lake Wangxing. If he remembers correctly, there was supposed to be a small town across the street. Everyone in it should have retreated to the big town. They have to keep going. After a little over an hour, they reach the town. Qin Yun didn't expect so many places in the town to be destroyed by monsters. It wasn't like this before when he passed by. Brother Li told him to stop for there was a beast inside. True, he's not sure about the quantity. Qin Yun sends this monster to check the situation. Everything he sees, the guy sees too. That's why it's safe. Fei Ling asked if the guy would make a flying eagle for her in the future. He has to promise her. Qin Yun replied that if she really got the eagle totem, her strength would definitely increase. But it would require the pattern of the totem to improve. Fei Ling said that when she found him, the guy was obligated to make an eagle for her. Qin Yun changed the subject and said that he was going to release his lion. That's what he did. As the lion ran past, eyes that glowed in the darkness were noticeable. Qin Yun told them to get ready to fight. After all, he had found the beast. The little lion increased in size. His opponent was a monster that looked like a wolf. The beast attacked the lion and bit him on the neck. Xin Yun noticed that his lion's hide was very tough. 
but this beast had bitten through it so easily. He used his technique. The monster flew back from the blast. The girl took aim at him with her bow. Her arrow flew straight at the monster's head. The monster shrieked in pain as the arrow hit the target. Chin Yun shouted for her to shoot three more times at him. The girl did as he said. Those arrows hit the target too. The monster's vision had been disrupted, so they must act now. Brother Li and Fei Ling attacked him. Brother Li landed a heavy blow on his head. Fei Ling also struck the monster with multiple cuts. Chin Yun wanted to finish him off with his hammer, but Fei Ling stopped him for it was all over. The beast had been defeated. Brother Li took out an 8th order magic crystal core, which can be exchanged for 1 million mystery points. The bones and skins are pretty good, but because of the large amount of animal corpses, they don't have much value. Brother Li said that only this beast stopped in the city. They need to move on. Chin Yun asked where they should go next. Brother Li talked about the first city. The girl asked what the two of them were talking about. Brother Li explained that the first city has no city walls and is located at the intersection of the Tianqi Empire and the Tianxiao Empire near the Yunlong River. It does not belong to the three empires, is far from many big cities, and is not close to strong martial arts courts. And a failing cliff that given that, it's probably full of beasts. Therefore, they will go to the first town. Two days later, they arrived in the city. Brother Li said that there were some hopeless people from various countries, some of whom were unable to take over the empire. After the group of monsters appeared, many people in the first city thought they could handle them, but they all became their food. Failing revealed that six people had just rushed in. They will have to deal not only with strong groups of monsters, but also with other groups of hunters. It was a pity that many beautiful houses had been destroyed. At least some of them had gone through the war without even collapsing. Feilin told everyone to be on guard. Right in front of them were several monster heads, all of which were of the Eighth Order. Brother Li asked if they should start right away. Qin Yun sensed the five monsters. If it's five eight-level ones, they won't be able to resist them. The best thing is to separate them and break them one by one. Brother Li told the girl to shoot off five arrows in a row when it rushed at them. When the arrows hit the beast, it would attack furiously, and Fei Ling and Qin Yun would wait for the opportunity to attack these roaming behemoths. If things don't go according to plan, they have to run. After all, there are many monsters here. Brother Li is not afraid that this operation will fail. If they don't get hurt, they can make money. The girl started shooting arrows as she was told. Qin Yun noticed that the arrow created by Kong's inner strength was so unusual. Brother Li and Fei Ling proceeded to kill the beasts. Qin Yun also kept up with them, Fei Ling said grabbing one, but something went wrong. Fei Ling shouted at Li Dazhen to back off, but Qin Yun managed to repel this attack that flew at the girl. Li Dazhen thanked him and said it was close. Brother Li told the guy to pack the body of the devil wolf faster, for other hunters were approaching. A man with white hair showed up and said it wasn't bad. They were able to escape his attack. The man asked who they were. Brother Li replied that they were from Xing Xuan. He asked why they suddenly attacked them. They almost injured his wife. Brother Li started yelling at him, then that you can't hurt people, especially his dear wife. The man is warning them. They're here, so they better get out fast. This is their hunting ground now. He ordered them to get everyone they killed. All the spoils are theirs. Qin Yun and Fei Ling said why should they give him anything. The man introduced himself. His name is Yin Sheng Yi Yi, the general of the Tianling Empire. Their empire is supported by Vice Dean Xuan Yuan. He had a drink with him a while ago. Xin Yun and Fei Ling said that this was nothing good to be proud of. Yin Sheng Yiya replied that their empire was the new great empire. He told them to hurry up and give up the beast they had just hunted, and they could let them return to Xing Xuan. When Qin Yun brings the monsters here, they will see if he can also speak as well as he does now. He baited the monsters. Qin Yun said that a large group of behemoths would be coming soon. This is the domain of the wolf pack. The spiritual wolf king is approaching. The general replied that spiritual beasts can only be dealt with through martial arts. He asked if the boy was lying to them, but now they could hear all the sounds the monsters made. The general said it was only a group of wolves, but he was out of shape today, so he let them go first. He turned and ran off with his men. Qin Yun apologized for just bringing the wolves over. Some of them are at the eighth level, and they are not their opponents at all. They need to run away. Brother Lee suggested we go to that big building. He used a set of signs to hide their breath so there shouldn't be a problem. Fei Ling just went out to look around. There are no other monsters nearby. The wolves they had encountered before were relatively weak. Li Dazhen said that the monsters were concentrated in the back of the first city. The center of the first city must have had many tragic deaths, and now it is seen as a food place for the monsters. 
After a short rest, they will walk back and kill the Devil Wolf. Brother Lee said that the stronger the Devil Wolf's inner ability, the smaller its volume. The ninth level wolf is about two to three meters long. A little later, they started to approach the wolf territory. Fei Ling said that the Devil Wolf collar was badly damaged. Killing a magic wolf is 50 million mystery points. Brother Lee suggested going back to the area swarming with wolves and see if there were a few more ninth level magical wolves. Chin Yun replied that these wolves are indoors. They just enter the store on the first floor and hide. The tasks are separated by some distance. They are relatively loosely distributed. They need to kill a wolf demon in one blow without letting it move. It was time for Chin Yun to come out. He entered the first floor. This time Wu Hoon really helped this time. He spotted a wounded level 9 wolf. He only needs to throw one punch. Chin Yun really hoped that everything would work out, 